Oh wow! Oh, he's F three fifty guy. Yeah, that's who yeah. the yeah. Apple yeah. that guy. Yeah. Yo, I'm the F three fifty guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could run his name now. I'll think of it. Yeah. You're the F three fifty guy. Yeah. We picked him up in that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. A retreat at home is not as fun. It's nine fifteen. Let's start the party. Are you doing well, the whole thing? I guess it's a retreat. I, I would start the thing, but I I don't think that that's that's a council right. retreat. All right. Yeah, exactly. I we'll all call a council meeting. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Uh -huh. Council meetings, too, though. That's true. Yes. All right. So, uh, call the order, and do you need a uh, count here, Sadie? Or? I got it. You got it? Okay. All right. Well, then we'll move into uh, ground rules and introductions. So, um, part of this is just uh, obviously. We need an idea of where we're going, so we need to know uh, how to get there. So uh, we, these discussions are important for all of us to set up, this is where we're going, set up our roadmap uh, and decide what's important for the council, because we are a new council, there's new people here, and so things change. So that's why we're doing this. Um, I wanna say uh, thank you, first of all, to all the staff for being here, because obviously you, know, you guys, aren't getting paid extra necessarily to be here. I know, no, good question. But we really do appreciate it. Obviously, we can't do this without you guys. So yeah. thank you for, for being here and kind of make you give up your time. Thank you for giving up your time <laughs> to be here uh, for this. It, it is much appreciated. Um, and then some ground rules just as we go through this. Uh, and basically, it's it's the same thing we all kind of do, but it's important to just kind of go over it. We're going to keep it professional, uh, continue our professionalism as we go through this, as you know, give everybody a chance to talk, uh, get their their uh, thing out that they want think is important. Uh, the agenda time is important. Obviously, everybody, you know, it's a beautiful day out. We'd like to finish on time and get out of here and let staff and ourselves, everybody, get out to uh, do what they want to do with the rest of their day. Um, and we can't sit on one topic forever. That's why the agenda time has been set up. So Sadie is uh, moderating the time aspect of it. So if we start to go over something, we will move an item if we haven't finished it, we'll move it to a uh, council workshop in the future. And I gave Sadie that stolen firearm uh, uh, to make sure that we keep up. Yeah, one time. Stay on time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, we're not making any decisions here. This is merely we're, we're discussing and then hopefully getting an idea of the direction that we want to go. Um, specific, uh, be specific on items. Uh, you need staff to prepare for later. So if there's something like, hey, we want to see X, Y, or Z, let's make sure we tell staff exactly what it is that we want so that they can actually produce it. Um, and then, uh, Discuss items that are on the agenda and not go off in tangents. So I, this this particular council, I think, is very good at discussing items that are important and certainly uh, can talk, right? All of us can. So uh, it's important that we stay on the topic of the agenda. If there's something that's not on the agenda that didn't make it to the agenda, we want to talk about it. Um, let me know, and that can come up at a future uh, workshop. We want to really stay on topic with what the agenda actually says. Okay, that's pretty much the ground rules. Next is the uh, around the horn. So five minutes for each council member. It gives you a couple of, of questions that you want to talk about. Or you don't have to take the five minutes, but if you want, if it does take you five minutes, you go, go through it. So um, Gwen, do you want to start? Sure. Um, I'm Gwendolyn Fullerton. Um, well, let's see. The reason why I ran for city council was because um, I was sitting on my couch during 2020 and yelling at the television and decided I do not want Bonnie Lake to become Seattle and there's something I can do about it. I want to make sure that we uh, as a constitutionalist, somebody who's constantly trying to study the Constitution and better my knowledge of what's going on. Um, I wanted to make sure that we were not 
trampling on our citizens' constitutional rights with uh, the things that were going on from Olympia and do whatever I can personally to help the people of Bonnie Lake to reclaim their rights and, and figure out what the heck they, what is going on around here. And I didn't want to become Seattle, like I said, so um, basically thought, well, what better place to start than to run for city council and make sure that the laws and the ordinances and all of the different things were um, constitutional and were going to help the people, not hurt the people. And I wanted to, I've made friends over the years, being here for almost 18 years now, that um, I was able to help small businesses be able to grow and expand and become prosperous without a hindrance from um, permits and things like that. So um, it just seems like a lot of things get really slowed down, bogged down. So I wanted to make sure that, that I could help small businesses and just feel like this was still Bonnie Lake. You know, I, I moved to Bonnie Lake because you got more bang for your buck. And it seems like things are getting more and more expensive around everywhere. So just want to try to keep taxes low and um, do whatever I can to help. Just one vote, but <laughs> it's my vote. Help the city. It was. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, run for city council again. Um, so no, I ran for city council because I think there's some things that still need to be worked on in the city, and I figured that I could help out. You know, being a little more knowledgeable about some of the older issues and all, and maybe I could add to you know the value. Hopefully, in the end, really bring the value to the citizens. You know, that's what I see. My role is to try to steer the city a little bit from a policy wise so that the citizens get the most value from the government that they choose to have. Because in my mind, the city is that, you know, optional layer. It's one of those pieces of government that doesn't have to exist because at any point in time, the citizens could easily say that they don't like the city anymore and that you can just get rid of the whole thing. Um, you can't get rid of a county, right? You can't get rid of a state, you're stuck. But um, we all do a really good job of staff is people that execute, you know, policy based, right? So we need to be able to instruct the staff on, well, not instruct, you know, policy wise, that from the council be clear on what we want the staff to chase, because we have all the professionals out there that, you know, can do that. But like me at work, a professional, I can't do anything without, you know, the people telling me the direction to go. So we will hopefully get there with that stuff. Um, the city accomplished, which is, of course, I was reading that earlier and I was like, the city accomplished. And, you know, from my point of view, I'd re much rather the, the city, like, have the attitude of facilitating what the citizens want done as opposed to what the city can do type of thing. I know it's kind of you know, flippy floppy kind of thing, but to me that again is, you know, providing the ability of the citizens to really be driving the issues and, and getting things done. There's a lot of things that the city has to do, you know, in respect to, you know, the public services side, which of course, you know, the safe city thing, super important, having a strong police force and a, the, the citizens that believe Police is doing a great job. Um, same with public services. Because those are the things that I've talked about with Ryan a lot, is that get done on a daily basis. The toilets don't overflow. The water is there every day. You know, to and the citizens completely un undervalue how complex that whole thing is to make happen. Everything from the billing side of the house all the way to actually delivering the product, you know, that you can turn your faucet on and get some water that's not going to kill you is amazing, <laughs> right? Um, that's the good part of it. The super bad part of that stuff is, is that the one major issue that's kind of left that I'm working on and really concerned with is, of course, the water and sewer rates. And some people have said they wanted to work on those. We'll see. <laughs> because that is a very sticky issue area. And I think that, you know, 
I'd like to see the water rates in the Bonnie Lake water sewer, what have you, the utilities should be comparable to the out, you know, the regional area. I don't, you know, we need to get there in my opinion, but that's just the place I've been trying to go with the water rates. We'll see on that. Yay. That's enough. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. We'll save the applause until yeah, the end of the <laughs> <laughs> I've been here since 95 in Bonnie Lake. I know a lot about the city, a lot about the people. I've been involved with Beautified Bonnie Lake since nearly its inception. The parks are really important to me. As you know, I care about having more parks in our city. I care about having more things for the young adults and seniors my age to be able to do in our city. Alan York Park and other areas, the East Cantic, as a senior we'll down there and measure we're going to walk and be safe down there. Kids can't go down to Alan York Park, young kids can be safe in the Alan York Park area, which is a forest out there. We need more parks, we need cleaner parks. That's why I've been pushing for Midtown my entire time on city council. And when I worked for Office Depot, I heard nothing about nothing but bad things about the city and the planning department, how slow it was, how, we had, how long it took to get things done. And so that's also why I ran for city council back then. When I first joined the council, we went and developed a community development committee. And I mean, a, um, what was it? Design or, or economic, development? Yeah, economic development committee, working with that department to see what they were doing, what was going on, and addressing the issues. <laughs> a lot of problems we had back then have all been taken care of. It's a lot, much of a smoother process now, including the online. We pushed with that when we had that committee. Can do so much is so much easier, so much simpler. The other part I want to know is what the associates are facing in the city, what they're doing the job. Well, you know, if they're participating, going on the trucks, going to the PD, different areas in the city, seeing how it functions and what's going on, so I can better address those issues myself. Uh, seven, eight years ago, our water was a big issue. I voted very hard to keep the lower the water rates as low as we possibly could. We voted for it last time. And I'll continue to do that because there's a lot more hopefully we can do. And it's very challenging with what it costs for us in our city to keep the rates low. So I'm going to continue to push on that, and that's my goal for this next year, too. Uh, getting a park in Midtown is my goal for this year um, because I have some things I'll show you later on today. It's a very simple things that we can do, at least have an area for people can go out and enjoy it. Beautify by a lake, put a trail in, exercise trail, and you'll be able to know about that and use it. And um, so having our people enjoy their city as they grow and their kids grow in our city too is very important to me. The roads, having them safe and be able to navigate through our city is the biggest challenge we have right now. As our city grows, the roads are getting to be tighter and we need to look at how, what, we, what we can do to put either traffic lights, which are very expensive to do, or putting ground, the roundabouts, which I've always talked about in our city, to be able to get through it without having traffic slowing down. No matter what we end up doing, we can't just sit back and let it, oh, we can't afford it. I don't like roundabouts. So, okay, what are you going to do to make it better than that we can afford to do? So, making a nice, livable, growing city is because I don't want people going to Holly and that's what they want to live and they come here to shop. We want them to live and shop in Bonnie Lake and make it a nice, small town. Uh, the last goal I have is to make sure that our, our budget is balanced. It's very challenging as we're facing this next year coming up here, next, next two years. What do we need to spend money on? What can we cut back on? And what's the right things for our citizens in Bonnie Lake? And the last little thing I forgot to talk about is communication. There's very little communication going out to our citizens, either on Facebook, a newsletter. I've talked about that from there about that. And what we're doing with our future growth in our city, the people don't know. Uh, another city close by to us here has a very good newsletter, and there's a links on there about <coughs> the agendas what the projects are working on, what parks are working on, what they're doing, uh, how to connect with them in the city. I want our city to be able to do that too. So I care about our people, care about what we do, working hard to make the city better for them. Like that. Thanks. All right. All right. Uh, well, I'm Angela Baldwin, and uh, I was not elected, I was appointed. And. <laughs> um, but I did come to the interview with, um, I had prayed a lot about this. Um, it weighed really heavy on my heart uh, for a long time. And so uh, when I finally uh, showed up and, and came, um, I was able to get this position. And so I, I find it um, 
definitely a privilege to be a part of something like this. I don't take it lightly at all. Uh, I feel like I am the representation of traditional family values in Bonnie Lake. I have young children um, and I also have teenagers and um, I do feel the same as Tom in regards to parks and just safety and cleanliness of parks. I, I have a little girl. I have all girls actually. <laughs> Um, and I, I don't want them to feel unsafe. I don't want our city to become a place like Seattle. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> I think that the main thing that really opened my eyes to the things that I've learned and that I've seen is that a lot of local people underestimate local government. They, they don't understand um, that this is where, this is where things start. This is where change happens. Um, and so even when I've realized, even when sending out emails to people, um, they actually listen, they listen. Whereas before when I was a mom with my kids at home and teaching, they didn't listen, they did not listen. And so um, I think one of the big things is I really, and I, and I know that a lot of you have already seen this, but I just really want um, local government to be comfortable for regular citizens to be able to speak to people like us um, and to be able to speak to the city, um, to be able to you know, say their concerns and not feel belittled um, or stupid. I think that's a lot of times when they come into a government um, setting, it just feels highly, it's very intimidating, very intimidating. And I don't want people to feel that way at all. Uh, also increasing opportunities for communications with citizens and, and that has been challenging to try to figure out ways to solve that. Um, I'm a big fan of Midtown Park, uh, not a big fan of that forest. So, and that's, that's one of those um, situations in which learning about Midtown has been very exciting. Uh, I do think that the balance of the budget is very important. That is a priority to me. Um, I've never been a fan of government having debt and then handing that debt off to the future. Um, and so, but that, but being able to balance a budget means making tough decisions um, that people aren't always excited about. And so, um, so I've always, I, I think now I see that anybody in public office and people that work in cities, um, there's just a lot of tough decisions that have to be made um, that weigh a lot on your conscience. Um, and then uh, the future, for the sewer, you know, I, I do uh, hope that there is um, just foresight in some of the decisions with that, but I know it, it just costs so much money. Everything costs so much money. And lastly, um, I, I believe strongly in the preservation of traditional family values. And so uh, people move to Bonnie Lake for that reason. They want to have their kids playing outside and feeling safe um, and things like that. And being, um, being a uh, wife of a police officer, um, I have heard and I have seen uh, all the ugliness that there is. I just don't want that for any of the families in Bonnie Lake. Okay. Hi, Justin. Hi there. Uh, I am Justin Evans. I ran for governmental efficiency, fiscal responsibility, uh, project management and budget projections. Uh, I want to make sure all of our citizens feel welcome, all of our police feel appreciated, all of our staff feel appreciated, uh, small businesses feel supported, and we have safe streets and parks for people to live and play in. Does it? Done. Bam. Oh, nice. it out. That was a job. Very efficient. Good job, Bill. And very responsive. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, would you like to go next? Sure. <clears throat> I'm uh, James Kelly McClymans. Don't I don't understand why my mom called me by my middle name uh, and not my first name. So it's a point of contention always. But I ran uh, for office because I uh, I do want to make sure that there is a my experience has shown me there is a difference between growing the city and growing government. There is a difference between effective uh, bureaucracies and ineffective bureaucracies. Um, these are things that we can't escape. Taxes, uh, the, the value the city brings. And so I, I just, uh, I really feel like 
I promise that I want to always ask the question, is this a burden to the citizens or a service to the citizens? And so public safety is an obvious uh, service to the citizens. And then after public safety, water and sewer are obviously a, a, uh, a service to the citizens. And then the question there is how effective is it? And I think Bonnie Lake does a, a, a fairly effective job at that. And we're at a point of inflection in the ability to build the infrastructure that's needed to grow the city. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people understand what's required, but uh, that, that. I do, uh, I do have very strong traditional family values. And uh, I also am very candid and recognize the fact that um, our state government does not. And the mechanisms and the policies in our state government that get slowed down, um, we're in a constant uh, uh, <clears throat> struggle with them. And uh, examples of that would be uh, grants that say we want to increase uh, uh, affordable housing. I love helping people. I think helping people comes best from people, not from government. I think government protects people and ensures people have and the level playing ground so that everybody can can play. And then people are amazing. They love each other. They want to help each other. And that's where things like affordable housing comes in. Um, if you have a culture where people where, where that is is there, but that's not something government does a really good job of. We we unfortunately are led to believe that's something we can solve. Um, we can't solve that. If somebody owns property and they want to charge a gazillion dollars for rent on that property, you're hard pressed to not do it. You've got to let the market um, uh, dictate what is what is reasonable there. And I want to protect all those people, the over uh, 12,000 people that moved here between 1999 and now, that moved here for a family-friendly environment that was reasonable and, and cost-effective for them, and I want to preserve that. So um, I love the staff at the city. They do a great job. I'm always amazed at how complicated and skilled, um, complicated a problem they keep solving and how skilled they are at it. And uh, I just want to thank the council and the mayor and the staff for all that you guys do, um, because it's not free. And it's, it's uh, I, I, really, I really do appreciate that. So, um, and I look forward to going forward to solving the parks problem and working at reasonable solutions for the utilities uh, uh, rates so that going forward, we either communicate that this is the necessary infrastructure or that uh, we're trying to lower rates. I think we can't tout enough the fact that we froze rate increases in order to observe and understand what's the best way to go. I think that's a positive thing the council did and the city staff uh, um, supported. So uh, I think we're heading in, the, we have a, a great, uh, as an engineer, there's two things that we look at. We look at the vector for a vector. There's direction and then there's magnitude. Our direction is awesome. Our magnitude, maybe we can, we're going to increase over these next few years, four years, that uh, will increase that direction so that we're a family friendly city with, with services that aren't a burden but are amazing. So thank you. Um, that is the, the council is good to one talking about this. Well, you also ran for election, so well, if you're uh, if you would like to say something, I think there, there there's time. I, what I will say, and all of this is contemporaneous, that what I'm hearing around the table, um, I think is uh, 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 very noteworthy, very valid. I think we all have. Um, I think we all have the same. Um, attitude as far as how our city is uh, and why we moved here and um, and I, I I think if we all keep <coughs> the same ultimate goal in mind what is best for our city um, I, I think we'll eventually uh, 
get there to where the you know to what we need to do with all the unions. But um, uh, that's what I appreciate about everybody who is sitting here, um, and virtually and uh, <laughs> and and physically is is that um, we're all as as um, Angela pointed out, um, we are all. Uh, here with local government. Local government is what not only is the first level of change, it is the, it is the government that affects our citizens the most. And, um, and I believe that we all have the same goal in mind is keeping our citizens safe, keeping and trying to uh, manage the city with as little effect on our citizenry as, as we have, such as utility rates and, and taxes. And if we all just keep that same um, focus in mind, I think we'll, uh, we'll eventually get there. And there we go. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm Terry Carter. Uh, I moved to the city in 2000. Um, I was hired on with the city in 2004. Uh, the reason I worked at the city is because I cared about where I lived and the city and important to give back anytime that you can um, and whether that be working or volunteering or you know whatever it is uh, it's important that we all step up and do something for our city it's difficult to tell people or ask people to do stuff if you're not willing to do it yourself um, so I worked for the city for some time which gave me a unique perspective uh, on how the city operates and how other cities operate. I've had those experiences as well. And so um, I ran with the idea that I have a, a, a vision for what Bonnie Lake could be. Um, and I think, I think we have a, a really good opportunity to get there and I'm excited about that. Uh, the things I'm really passionate about obviously is public safety. Um, which it sounds like you know, all of us are, which is awesome. Uh, it's, it's a good place to be. Um, I'm also concerned about the water and sewer rates, and that would have made it on the agenda for this, but we're, we have some other things that have to happen first. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm interested in, in getting that down as well. Uh, and then um, kind of what I, I think one of the big concerns, and not that I or the council necessarily can deal with this ourselves, but it's something hopefully we can foster, is just a really good culture for the staff uh, as, as they're coming up to take on new roles and, and that kind of thing and make sure that you know, hopefully we can get fully staffed so that uh, people aren't doing six different things, right? Um, it, that is super important. Uh, when you're, you're running off doing a bunch of different things, it's hard to do any one thing well. Not to say that everybody isn't doing a wonderful job uh, in doing all those things, um, but you shouldn't have to, right? So, uh, yeah, so uh, that's important, and I want to see that change. That's one of the reasons, you know, the, the looking at the, the staff appeal on here is, is on here. Um, and then uh, I'm also very interested in grant opportunities. I don't know that we have, uh, you almost need somebody specifically to go after grants. And I think that's uh, super important because there's so much money that's out there uh, that we could get, but determining which grants are ones we should go for and which ones are maybe too burdensome uh, to go, go for is important. Uh, so having somebody who does that and looks at that, uh, I would like to see that in the future. And then just uh, you know, responsible growth. We, we're gonna grow, we can't stop it. I think there's been council members in the past uh, who didn't want to grow or wanted to just kind of keep growth at, at bay. Um, we're not going to be able to do that, but how do we do that responsibly? It's going to happen, so how do we make the best of it? Um, so that's kind of my, and like I said, my vision for the city with Midtown Park and with a downtown corridor, hopefully in the future and that kind of thing, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to see. And that's all I have, thank you. So with that, uh, we'll move on to the review of 2021 highlights by the department. Okay, can I share my screen? Does <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody need a hard copy of the packet? I think I've got one here. Yeah, John, I could use a hard copy. 
touch on each department a little bit um, so that you guys can see a couple of things. So some highlights for um, 2021 in the executive department, um, the recreation program. Oh, and two things. Okay, sorry. Recreation program was at or near capacity um, with guidelines and still. So they're starting to pick up more. They've done a lot of events. Um, our EOC has initiated a contract for the alert um, and warning service to Unsolved and Cold Red, which will be our Bonnie Lake alert for emergencies and mass mail, uh, mass uh, news warnings. warnings and updates. Sorry. <laughs> um, we also have an emergency manager now that's helping out to get us up to par where we should be. Um, the prosecuting office, um, they um, have done the creation of a community court program, which currently has 12 participants in that program. So that is taking off really good. They have some staff changes and they're trying to catch up on all the backlog from COVID and not being able to have court. The police department has done a lot. <laughs> they have successfully adapted to the 2021 legislative reforms, which contributed to a large spike in criminal activity in the second half of the year. Um, detectives have investigated 487 cases clearing 377 of those cases while referring 147 of them for criminal charging. Public Services Department, somehow Ryan has lots. <laughs> so um, they survived, Public Works survived a turnover of 25% of staff due to retirements and transitions to the city. They have repaid kiosks at the boat launch. Sorry, the irony on that just struck. <laughs> <laughs> just hit me right now. <laughs> um, for permitting, there's been a, a, lots of promotions um, moving up in order to um, cover the, um, the workload and um, where we need to be in that department. Engineering has completed a bunch of projects, including the Fennel Creek Trail sections and um, some of the Tacoma Point Reservoir planning and building. The city applied for and received a $100,000 housing action plan implementation grant. And, uh, okay. and for the clerk's office, um, I had created a PowerPoint for staff to watch on how to dispose of records properly and why. And I went through it with every staff member and then did the PowerPoint for all new staff that could come in, they can just watch it. Um, we also finished um, a clerk's office manual. So it has links, it has step-by-step -step directions with pictures on everything that the clerk's office does. For information technology, um, we have migrated Barracuda Mail Archiver and Spam to the cloud-based services, and also migrated the SQL server. For the Senior Center, the Senior Center was closed to the public for all of 2021, but they overcame some of that by still providing hot meals using a drive-up and delivery service, as well as, co as complimentary groceries. Human resources, we had a total of 28 separations occurred in 2021, nine of which were due to retirements. In total, there were 29 employees throughout the year. Finance department, they started the implementation of inbound and 
outbound IDR to help with late notices, as well as taking payments at any hour. And they successfully started utility billing, late notice shutoffs after the COVID pause and worked with customers on ways they can get assistance as well as payment plans. In the courts, we welcomed a new judge, Judge Daniels, in April. And they also have gotten an AOC grant for therapeutic court, um, which is part of the community court that was approved in September and funds were received in December. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing when it comes to project needs because you can see there's a lot. <laughs> so for the executive department, uh, recreation and special events is hoping to get an online registration presence, whether it is Tyler product or something different, so they could take online registrations. They are also hoping to overall work with area partners to determine how they can serve the community through the department and not have a negative impact on the general fund in doing so. The prosecuting office. Um, they would like to try and maybe restructure and potentially create a legal department versus a division. They are also starting the police body worn video camera footage support. So they're going to, for the courts, they're going to be going through all those videos of the police worn cameras and having to do redactions and everything for courts. Um, the EOC program um, is planning on outfitting the um, EOC with the supplies that are desperately needed. I'm gonna try and get us up to par on those. They're also hoping to update the city's continuity of operations and the continuity of government plan. And the police department um, is trying to utilize the COPS grant for hiring additional officers and implement a drone program. None of us can get away with anything. <laughs> <laughs> the municipal court is hoping to um, start electronic e-filing. Public services. You guys get a quick over here. <laughs> we'll see. Engineering has, um, it has a lot of projects that they're planning on doing in water and sewer. They are needing an engineering tech and a project manager for these projects to get going. Um, planning is um, going to be working on a housing action implementation grant work. They are in need of a plans examiner. For permitting, they are migrating their paper files into being digitized and they are doing a really great job. So they're hoping to finish that project and they'll be almost paperless up on the third floor. For uh, public works, they are needing a fourth assistant superintendent to supervise facilities and sleep. They're also in need of ideally four maintenance workers, one and two, in order to help with facilities and parts. Um, there are planning on doing a bunch of upgrades and repairs to the sewer and streets and stormwater and water. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just keep going. <laughs> I like her. Yeah. Just to make it happen. Uh, administrative services and person. They're hoping to get a salary study in order to help ensure that job descriptions are up to date and that we're competitive with the local other governments. And so hopefully we can make sure our staff are wanting to work with us. Um, they are also hoping to build a training plan for supervisors and develop continued onboarding for new hires. The clerk's office. I'm um, hoping to restructure the clerk's office a little bit because it needs to be restructured. Ideally, I need two staff members. Um, I'm currently paying overtime using finance um, for Stephanie helping me with every free time she has. And my two girls will be out of class here. 
Senior Center um, is going to submit any available grant to all agencies for which nonprofit qualifies. For information technology, they're planning on moving the city owned fiber cables from the old PWC to the Senior Center to prep for demolition. And the big project is to replace the city Wi Fi and the virtual host services because it's the end of life for them. And that is it. All right. Yay. Thank you. Now I just don't know how to get it. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the uh, parks plan. All right, let's go. <laughs> so yeah, you guys are super excited. Minimize self view. Would it better if you hit the, the return arrow? Pull up like 10 4 now. Okay. Oh, there, there we go. go. Nice. Stop sharing. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 We're all sprinting. <laughs> well, you probably have to share it again. Are you, are you, uh, are you sharing the park view oh. there? Oh, that's the next one. Yeah. So. All right, share my screen again. <laughs> oh, Chester. Yeah. Yo, I'll make Quinn do the mouse. <laughs> if I could just start by anyone that's on the call, you're going to have to vocalize because we minimized that particular screen. So if you're waving at us, we cannot see you. <laughs> All right. So thanks, everyone. I put this together just because we, we keep talking about parks and funding, and, and I'm really agnostic to most things, but specifically what we do with our parks. This is a decision of the people. Um, it just needs to be something that we know how to fund when that decision is made. So what I did is I put together a little little presentation here on some potential concepts at Midtown, uh, some comparable car, uh, costs, uh, park CIP revenue options, and park CIP bonding options. And I put this little pretty tree in the upper left-hand corner so you know it's about parks. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2015, um, there was a design done uh, by Bruce Dees and Associates. He's done all of our park design. And there was a concept driven or, or created for Midtown. Uh, 47, 000, or 47 acres, uh, we had three multi-purpose fields, tennis courts, basketball, bocce, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we had a stage with uh, an amphitheater and then a walking trail. So, you know, we're talking about doing things at Midtown and talking about making plans for parks. There is one that was previously done. It probably needs to be reviewed and addressed, but you know, we're not in, we're not out there blind right now. There was a, an actual concept the city paid money for it done. It, Justin, I, I would just point out that that concept, concept plan that you have there doesn't take into account the existing stormwater pond. So you have the existing stormwater pond that's along South Prairie. Oh, okay. And then curves up yeah. on towards the end. Yeah. And, we had, and we had yeah. talked about covering that too. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible, but that's what yeah. we have. It's so beautiful. Yeah. That's that's the, the right, there, right, there, right there, right here. Yeah, but then it, cur it curves up. Yeah, it goes up. Oh, it goes up, yeah, it goes up yeah. in there. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So you can't put a party line. Well, I mean, as, as Tom <laughs> said, you could do underwater stormwater detention. But... Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that was one of the concepts at one point in time yes. was to recover that. But like you said, it's a cost. They had to wait. Like the heat and storage tank at one point in time, we were going to use. Yep. <laughs> Even more than that. <laughs> and we're stuck with that outline of what that 
looks like. Uh, actually, when the right residential out. side develops, it gets bigger. It gets, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I did is, just so everyone has an idea of what some things out there are cost, um, I looked at a few comparables. I went out to the Tacoma Star Center. It's an amazing facility. A um, bunch of different uh, options out there, dance studio, art studio, party rooms, fitness center, indoor playground, uh, full commercial kitchen. People rent it out for events and weddings, and we were out there for a um, birthday celebration, and it was just an amazing, amazing facility and, and uh, concept out there. Uh, it was built in 2012 and cost about $16 million back then. Uh, there's a calculator I use that puts that in today's dollars, about $20 million. Uh, there's the Federal Way Community Center. Uh, I know at some point uh, pools have been discussed, um, so I wanted to add something that had a pool in it. Um, that opened in 2007, almost 70,000 square feet, a large multi-purpose room, large event center, uh, fitness center. Um, back in the day, it cost $15 million. Again, that would be about $21.5 million uh, in today's money. Uh, Maple Valley, they did a really cool thing out where they're at. They had 22 acres, so it's a little less than half of what we have. Um, but of that, 15 acres is recreational. The, the rest is parking and all the other stuff that goes with it. Two multi-purpose fields of dog park, uh, dedicated baseball field, skate park. Um, and that one was $10.5 million. Sorry, I forgot that some of these are on a on a trigger, but oh, anyway. sir. Yeah. yeah, that's all right. Um, you guys can look it up. The the link is in the the, the packet where it came from. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about an athletic complex at Midtown. Uh, Lacey is probably the closest one that is the most revered as far as athletic com uh, complexes in the area. Uh, this was built in '98. Uh, half the costs were by the county and half were by Lacey. Uh, 67 acres, six soccer fields, four soccer or softball, dedicated baseball. They have an outdoor festival area, some play structures. Um, back then it was 20 million, now it would be about 35 and a half million. Um, but I mean, that thing's used almost year round by almost every softball team in the entire Northwest area. I'm sure Idaho, um, Washington, and Oregon all come up here for softball tournaments there. Uh, there's Delta Park. That's probably a little bigger than Lacey and a little well known. That's uh, just after you cross over into Oregon, uh, just past the bridge there, uh, there's this complex. Um, it's, it was built a long time ago, so I couldn't find enough data to really tell you how big it is or um, when it was built or how much it was. They do have seven softball fields, soccer fields, nine of them, four with turf. Uh, it is 85 acres. Um, it is a money generating area for their city because all around that is hotels and restaurants and shopping. Um, when you're going down there for a three day tournament to play six or eight team or six or eight games with the with your softball team at those hotels you're you're buying the you're buying at the restaurants you're shopping at tax-free at target across the street so they started building in 1950 and they just built something about every 10 years. oh okay perfect hmm. uh, a little closer to home we've got the daffodil sports complex down in sumner that was built in 98 seven acres uh, this was paid for uh, by private funding and the sumner rotary you know there was some additional uh, upgrades that were recently done to it. Uh, I couldn't get hard costs on any of that stuff because it wasn't available. But they do have two tennis courts, a small basketball court, picnic area, uh, baseball fields. And that's just right behind uh, the uh, the big church down there in Daffodil Elementary, I believe. Brinker, I don't know if many of you have been out there in Spanaway. Uh, that's another. So my niece and nephew played baseball and softball their entire lives. So and. They both coached college level, and uh, so I've gone to all of these at some point, so that's why I picked these. Is I've spent many of hours and days out at these facilities. Uh, Sprinkler's built in 76. It was 30 acres. They've got an indoor ice skating, tennis, um, indoor tennis, and outdoor tennis, racquetball, pickleball, football, baseball, softball, skate park, rock wall. Uh, I couldn't get the original cost on Sprinkler, but they are doing a current renovation right now, um, and that is this phase one. Uh, renovation here 
they're adding a spray park, a uh, playground. Um, I know what futsal Yeah, I was going to say, what is futsal? Yeah, I'm not sure. I might have either typed that wrong or I don't know what it is. Um, new baseball or basketball courts, some uh, ball fields. Uh, phase one is currently projected at 14 million and it's going to start later this year. And that's just a renovation to it. Uh, and then Allen York, uh, we actually know when that started and how much that's projected to be. So I put that in here because that's a multi purpose field that would be similar to what would be used out there. Uh, beyond just the comparables, um, there is the projected parks cost. Um, this is based on what our own comp plan says from 2015 to 2025. Um, we are expected to bring in about $10 million from park impact fees. Uh, 3.2 million in uh, has actually already been received. So that leaves a balance of 8.3. Now this was back in uh, 2020, 2021 when I was working with Jason on this. So um, that available balance is probably closer to seven now. Um, or uh, expected, not balanced, but expected about another seven million. And then uh, that means on average, we're expected to get about another $600,000 going into parks from park impact fees, which isn't a significant amount compared to what we just looked at for the costs of parks. So um, our comp plan also estimates that if we build out Midtown, uh, 69 and a half acres, that's $15 million. Now, mind you, this was done in 2015, that 15 is probably significantly more. And that's without a sports complex. That's just building out the, the engineering and building out a uh, kind of the design that um, was originally discussed back in 2015. Uh, and then we still had at the time of, uh, I made this earlier uh, last year, we still had over $9 million in Fennel Creek that we still had to pay off to complete that from start to finish. Right now, our park impact fees are 4,400. They may have gone up since 2022 went into effect, but our comp plan says in order to meet the goals of our city, um, our park impact fee should be a little over 10500 dollars, and we're at less than half of that right now. So for every new home built and every park impact fee received, we're cutting the the potential uh, revenue by 45 or by 55 percent. So for every new house built, we're underfunding our parks by 55% based on what our comp plan says. Now, personally, I don't think, I think 10,500 is, is a lot of money to pay for a new home. So I'm not saying that that's what we should be charging. I'm just saying that's what the math shows from our comp plan when we had it done. So with the um, ending fund balance at the end of this year being 285,000 projected revenues going into park CIP, uh, which is uh, REIT, real estate excise tax, that's when you sell a home, and park impact fees, that's when you build a home. Uh, it's a little less than a million dollars. So at the end of next year, if we do absolutely nothing, um, we'll have $1.2 million in our park fund account. If we uh, do nothing in 2024, we'll add another 962,000, or yeah, which would leave us at the end of 2024 with 2.2 million. And we have nine million left in Fennel Creek. We have more to pay off on Allen York that we just, you know, that $2 million that we transferred over. Um, so I just, like I said, I'm agnostic to all this. I just want everyone to know that at the end of next year, if we do absolutely nothing, or at the end of 2024, we will have $2.2 million to fund $50 million worth of potential parks that we need over the next 20 years. So that's why I keep bringing up, we can't, come up with a park plan until we know how to fund it. Without the money to do it, we're just shopping at things we can't afford. Uh, Tom's got some good options for uh, a low impact, low cost park renovation out at Midtown uh, based on some down in Sumner. That would be a great option to get things started down there. But just simply alone, knowing how much engineering costs for a city, clearing that, getting the engineering done, getting the permitting done, we're going to blow through that 2.2 million before we can even put up a swing session. So, um, some of the options for revenue, um, and this is this is I wish I could zoom in on this. Um, 
this is the, when I keep saying $59 million, it's not just a number I'm pulling out. This is a number that our comprehensive plan shows. And that is um, the potential BMX facility. And, you know, all these things still have to go through a vote of the council, but this is what our um, comp plan says is expected. Um, we're only at phase one A, I think, of the Allen York master plan. And I think there's four phases and each phase probably has two phases within it. So we're only one eighth of the way through in funding this and we're already $2 million over budget on just that field. So that leaves uh, another 20 million unfunded there. You know, the potential dog park, uh, I do have a Costco appointment for my glasses, but <laughs> I think that is pretty small. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Katie, I got it right here, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it. <laughs> Talk about yourself that way. <laughs> positive. Yeah, positive. Look at that. I can zoom right in. <laughs> what a concept. Oh, man. <laughs> Some things I'm really good with. Yeah, sometimes I'm... Um, yes, so, uh, and then we talk about, you know, we, we want to support our veterans. We have a Veterans Memorial Committee that has a dilapidated four by eight piece of plywood up in a parking lot of a bank right now. That's the potential site for that. I'd like to actually see some movement on actually a, a memorial for that. $125,000 for a potential dog park still. Fennel Creek uh, segment three is 7.2 million between 2024 and 2031. So all of that, these are projected known costs. That's $32 million. That's without Midtown, that's without East Town, and that's without a potential sports complex. Those three, according to the comp plan, would be another $27 million. So that's where the $59 million comes up with. So my thoughts are uh, there's a couple of different revenue options for park money. We've, we've kicked around the idea of a B&O tax, which would be about 0.2% which is the max that we could do as a council on businesses. Um, and that would generate, based on what the Department of Revenue says, about 1.5 million a year for the city. Uh, that 1.5 million can be bonded. Uh, there's another option, which is a Metropolitan Parks District. We can ask the people to, uh, if they want to put together a new district that would allow for a property tax on their property. Uh, no different than a school district or a fire district. Um, it would be uh, just another governmental agency that would be taking money from their property tax. That being said, they could generate up to $3 million a year off of that if they max that rate out at 75 cents per thousand. Um, and historically though, there was a vote in 2013 and that failed by 79.52%. <laughs> so it, it, it was close. It was really close. Uh, a couple more yeses. And we, and they uh, so as much as those are the options, I don't think this is. Um, so if we went back to a B&O tax and we, we figured, or I figured we used the numbers from 2020, and I think Ryan provided the, uh, the original $798 million of taxable income that was sold in the city of Bonnie Lake. Um, if, you, if you took that and did the 0.002% B&O tax, uh, that would generate about 1.5 million annually. And right now you can bond 1.5 million for a maximum potential of about 20 million. Uh, as the interest rates went up recently, it went from about 60 to 65,000 per million borrowed to about 75. So we, in, in that, in the last six weeks, we've already lost the potential of about $3 million of bonding because of that interest rate hike, and, and it's just going to go up from there. So um, every every quarter that we don't do anything on this is more loss and, and um, less bonding potential. Uh, we do have a debt cap. Debt cap for our entire city is $49.6 million. Uh, that is a max capacity at 1.5% of our taxable properties. Uh, Sherry sent me an email earlier that says we're about 33 million right now. So we can bond about 16 million of that 20 million. Again, this is just all top level stuff. Um, and bonding, that would be taxing every every business in the city. 
personally, I think there should be an exclusion for small business, whether it's the um, exclusion of the first half million dollars worth of sales, or if your B&O tax is um, greater than fifty thousand uh, dollars, the first fifty thousand is excluded from collection. So a small business like CJ's Deli may only generate on this two percent, maybe sixteen or eighteen thousand dollars in and what would be a B&O tax to, to Connie, that would be excluded because that would be under the $50,000 cap. Uh, companies like Costco, Walmart, Safeway, Red Meyer, Home Depot, Lowe's, there's no way those are gonna be under that cap and that's really who we're looking at um, trying to get this from. Uh, the reason I, I believe going this route is, is good is because it's one, it'll be coming from the larger businesses. They can either absorb that or increase their their uh, their sale price but it's being paid for by everyone that lives and shops in the area not just in our city mm -hmm. so uh, instead of having the entire burden be done by uh, all 22,000 citizens of Bonnie Lake you're going to have uh, Buckley, Enumclaw, Tahali, Sumner, Unincorporated, Pierce County, Puyallup all of these companies that all these people that shop here are going to be generating that funds those are also the people that will be using it so it's not just being paid for by the citizens and being used by the entire area. It's being paid for and used by the entire area. So it's a, a smaller burden for our city and our citizens to cover, but it's also being paid for by those that are using it altogether. So um, that would be my ideal scenario, would be a, a B&O tax, uh, maxing out that 0.2%, um, excluding the first 50,000 or 500,000 in sales, 50,000 in B&O, however, However, that breaks out, you know, that's a, a discussion for another time. Um, bonding uh, that revenue stream, putting some of that money towards a uh, accounting staff that would have to monitor, audit, and do all of the collections on that, putting some of that money towards maintenance and operations for parks, and then the rest going into our capital park improvement. We'll still be generating the $900,000 a year in our park CIP uh, with real estate tax sales and um, the uh, park improvement fund uh, contributions. But as our available inventory of homes uh, shrinks for, for building, so too does that revenue stream. So right now we have a park department or a, a parks plan that is in need of growth and a revenue stream that is continually shrinking. So, you know, we've kind of jumped the shark on that where we, we, we don't have enough money to do what we need. So this is about the only way, it still only covers a portion of what we need based on our comprehensive plan, but it's a good start. And then some uh, conservative planning and dialing back on the scope of work will help cover some of those offsets. Question. Yeah. Um, on the, uh, on both B&O tax and the, uh, and the bonding uh, issues, uh, my understanding is that the procedure is is that we would actually have to take this to a vote to the people. Am I, am I correct on that? In no. That? Oh, okay. that is no. not correct with the bond. Whoa! A bond? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> my expertise here. Am I loud? Yeah. Is it loud? Yeah. <laughs> we can actually It's not loud on my side, so I don't know how to turn it down. <laughs> is that controlled on your side? Are you down? Okay. So, a bond? Um, is councilmanic. Uh, a bond can be councilmanic, and you guys would just set the rate on that. A B&O tax, yes, that's going to go not to a vote, but it's going to go to your council meetings, right? Um, you're going to have to do the whole council process and um, probably a public hearing on that. Um, you can also bond with a vote. You do have that option as well. Um, and uh, you also have the ability to do the parks uh, Metropolitan Parks District, which would require the vote as well, but it would also let you know what your voters want, whether or not they want you to spend the money on parks. So, and I'll I'll step back on revenue side since I know a lot of the revenue discussions coming up, but more than happy to answer any revenue questions here. Mr. Mayor, when we built out the Public Works Center, that we we knew. Okay. So that's that's all I have. I said, what, what we do out there, that's up to the people. I just need everyone to know 
how much it's going to cost and how little we have to do it. So. A question. Yeah. Um, is there like an excise tax also that, that goes towards parks when people buy and sell a home? That's is the any re of the, yeah, the real estate excise tax. Okay. In there, yeah. So what, what percentage is that? Uh, it's listed in there. It's 395000 I believe, okay. over each year. I think it's about 360, and it depends on how many houses are sold. So right now is a really good time, but I suspect housing um, sales will start to drop as the interest rates go up. Another another potential revenue option would be looking at the cost of um, the park impact fee during the permitting process, or potentially adding that as well to commercial sites of things. We're about to build out 40 or 50 million dollars in East Town over the next few years. A, a portion of that, none of that is currently going to park impact fees. So, you know, you're going to add a lot of businesses and a lot of people and employees, but none, none will go towards parks because that's only on new home construction. New home construction and real estate excise tax. So, buy a home, build a home. That's the only way our parks are currently funded. Do, do we know? why I'm sure in the past or whatever that it wasn't put on commercial. That I don't I know. I don't know that we've ever Okay. I mean we've talked about it in, in recent memory, but yeah. I don't know back then that we ever yeah. I mean I think it makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah but I think it's kind of difficult. I think it's not too terribly straightforward. What do you mean? Because there's because it's like what's whatever that is. You're the lawyer in the room. What are the next <laughs> well, I mean, the commercial uh, it's, thing? Um, so what I've seen in the past is it's based on square footage. Yeah. So it's um, you know if a subway was being built out, it's you know it's under five thousand square feet. It's X. You know if you're building a eight hundred thousand square foot warehouse, you're going to be on this side of things. So it's proportionate to the scope of work. Unlike a home, where if you build a eight hundred square foot home on five acres or a uh, 3,500 square foot home on a quarter acre lot, it's still the same price. So I think having some sort of sliding scale on that or scope of work, it's a tenant improvement versus a new construction. Um, I would I would look at that as well. Chances are a tenant improvement would have either been grandfathered in or excluded from that because it'd really be the envelope build out. So anything being built, just like a new home, I would say new construction build out, but not a tenant improvement. Would should generate some sort of revenue for that? Well, then we have it on multifamily too, right, Dylan? So we do. It's the same rate. At the, what do you mean the same rate? Oh, uh, that's reduced rate, isn't it? Something. Oh, uh, multifam. Uh, actually, is park impact fee is according to this is for both. It's a reduced rate is what it's supposed to be on the comp plan, but I believe. Unless something changed, but in 2021, I believe you it was like to build a 300 unit. 4400. 300. For parking back fees. Yeah. Yeah, 4436 is what 2021 was. What do you do? You just take the total footage of It's like the original uh, like plan was 10,000 and 8,000, and then the actual ended there, up but... being 4,400. My th thank you, first of all, for putting that together. Yeah. That's yeah. a mm -hmm. ton of information. That, um, I think you're right. I think we all talk about doing park stuff, and if we don't uh, fund it in some way, then eventually we're not, we're not setting our map as to where we want to go, right? So um, I could, I think you've made the case for a potential B&O tax. Especially getting people from outside the city uh, that are paying some of that as well, since they're going to be the ones using it as well. Yeah. I think that makes total sense. And I like the small business idea as well. Yeah, I, that's the last person I want to hurt. Or right. That are you know struggling just to make it right now. Yep. So if we could figure out uh, some sort of cap, if if on average a small business that makes five million would be X on that point zero 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 two, and, and we set an exclusion up to five million, which would be the exclusion of whatever that would generate. You know, I think that would probably 
um, exclude <coughs> a lot of our smaller businesses and, and not hurt them as much as it would the other one. And a lot of these corporate businesses that are in town, Costco, Bonnie, or Costco, Walmart, they're they're paying these all across the board in every other jurisdiction that they're in, most cases. So you know, it's nothing nothing new for them. It's just the cost of doing business. Well, I was <clears throat> step forward to be in on check with Chuck the same way. The two two things important to me: gets gets so many revenue coming to do a future development there. Now, so as Justin just talked about doing something. So as soon as we can, like we're doing down in Sumner right now, one park, they've got a play area, basketball court, they've got an area for the picnic area, and a small uh, field area down there. We pass, I don't have enough for everybody to pass that down, though. That is so Sumner Park? This is what Sumner's doing one of their I think parks so, down yeah. there. So if we had that, like, right away, and um, had a disc golf course out there for now, right away, that would help fill up. Midtown Park, and people can see what we're doing out there. We've got the road going out there, with a small park out there. And when we did Victor Falls, <clears throat> it cost us about $80,000, and that wasn't budget at all then. We could do something like that. We have some of the accessories already to do that. And we got a lot of people ready to help build the disc golf course. And we got the exercise trail. So at least we'll get something started and do so. they to keep the transit out of the area too. The police are doing a great job doing that, but we need to start someplace. So we started with that this year, and then started the funding plan you have here. Next couple of years, we could get something going. What our ultimate goal would be, we see probably what the citizens want to do. Yeah, and I'm not opposed to the citizen going full, full vote of the citizens either. I know that would probably be Kelly's preference, and, and I completely agree that is more exclusive of everything. But I, honestly. It's one of those things where you've got to put your money where your mouth is, and everyone's going to want parts, but no one's going to want to pay for them. Because if you put that on on me, I'm going to vote no for it because I already see my taxes going up year and year after year after year. I don't want to increase my taxes. So I I get both sides of that. You know, I I think you go to the vote of the people, and you're going to say no. They they did in 2013 overwhelmingly. Yeah, I but think, if you, I think yeah, they yeah, they're but, gonna vote. but if you build the parks, they're going to use them. Mm -hmm. and, and it is collected on single family in each unit in a multifamily development. At the same rate, though, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it seems like we're kind of we're we're kind of talking about both the uh, the park plan kind of and the revenue stream options, right? As, uh, Sherry has some something she wants to say in regards to. Yeah, am I too loud? I'm going to try to whisper. You're good. Thank you. Is it good? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not a loud talker typically, so it's really strange. I am getting a little bit of feedback, and I'll try to ignore that. Uh, so revenues, since you guys are talking parks and revenues, and they kind of go hand in hand, and so that you guys can make a um, good decision, I wanted to go ahead and jump to my presentation. I was asked to provide revenues that are possible, not just for parks, but for the general fund as well. Um, your water sewer are considered a business fund, so they will support themselves by rates, and we're working on that study, so I won't address that at all. Um, but I will talk about the BNO tax, the Parks District, and the Transportation Benefit District. These are the only funding sources um, that we haven't utilized at this point. Um, I think that if you uh, go out for a vote of the people in the Parks District, and you know, last time it was almost 80% to a no. Uh, at least you'd have your answer as to what your citizens value and whether or not they want to put their money in parks. Um, so as your finance director, I, I would encourage you to do that. Um, also, as your finance director, I'm here to tell you your general fund is not looking well. You have heard that many of your staff are going to be asking for more staff this year. I've already told you that your balance, your budget is out of balance. Um, so it's my opinion as your finance director that if you were to go out for B&O tax, I feel it should support the general fund as well. Um, if you're supporting parks before your staff, your actions are going to cause reactions with your staff and your AFSCME and your police guild, as well as your non-reps. Um, I think you really need to think about the message you're sending, uh, knowing that you have a budget that's not balanced and that 80% of your citizens previously said no to parks. So that's my finance director side of it. If you have questions about any of these, um, 
methods you have available, a transportation benefit district, I'm sure you've heard of them. They would support your streets, your projects. Um, so I'd be able to pull that out of the general fund. Your general fund wouldn't pay for that anymore. If you had a parks district and you made it the boundaries of the city and the citizens voted yes, then that would be able to support your um, parks improvements as well as any parks maintenance anything that affected parks and recreation as a whole and BONO taxes uh, general fund not restricted so you could commit you know a portion of that to go towards parks um, but I would not suggest that you per, you know put it all towards your parks good point thank you what uh, do we know back in 2013 when this went on the, the ballot I don't recall exactly what the question was like what you know <laughs> I don't think we had a, a list of projects or anything. I think no, it was just, do you want to form a metropolitan right. parks district yeah. with the authority to fund yeah. blank amount of money? Yeah, and based on that, I would automatically vote no. I don't want somebody else taxing me for nothing, right? right. So right. Yeah. if we don't have a plan, what you want to do with that money and stuff, then I think, yeah, yeah you're always going to get an overwhelming no. So I worked um, for another city that actually passed a parks district in the same time frame as 2012 or 13, and that was key. We had to have a list of what we wanted to do with that money and why the city needed that money. Otherwise, I think it would have been voted no. The citizens, a very um, conservative community, also voted yes for a parks district, but we had public meetings about it. We had a flyer out to let them know what the money would be used for and what we promised to do with the money. That's, that was my question to you, Sherry, was how was it uh, published um, so that the public would understand exactly what they would be voting for? Because I have a feeling that um, uh, one of the reasons why it was a massive no before was because of, um, for lack of better word, ignorance, which is not a bad word, just simply that they did not know all of the implications as to what they were voting for with the uh, Metropolitan uh, Parks District. They just saw it on ballot. And, and check the no box. So um, how successful right. was that publishing uh, effort? Um, so so we I, sent out flyers in, in the city that I worked for. We sent out flyers um, that showed exactly what the money would be for and what money we expected. And they did not vote. We did not recommend a 75 cents per thousand. We went lower. Um, and then um, the other thing that we did was we had community meetings and we sent out lots of notices telling them, come ask Sherry questions. And so I was there giving a song and dance, showing them what the general fund looked like and why the general fund couldn't pay for the parks and what would happen if we didn't do this. Did we have a quorum of, or did y'all have a, a quorum of a council there where it had to be in a mandatory uh, open public meeting uh, with that? Uh, no. So we they were allowed to attend as citizens but they were not allowed to speak up at the matter it was uh, a city manager and finance director presentation wherein the citizens could ask questions so it wasn't an open public meeting but i will tell you it was the largest meetings i've ever had in that city there was over 100 people and i think we went to three different meetings so 300 people came I mean, we can send John around to do all these meetings while we sit back and uh, he collects all the data. <laughs> hey, Sherry, did that create a new government entity? So it does. You're right. Um, it was of the same council, though. Uh, we kept it within the contiguous borders. Oh, they didn't. Yeah, okay. And, and that was our proposal was the dual half thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So th that whole thing, unless, you know, that you feel free to discuss it at some particular time if you wanted it, but you're going nowhere with it. it it's it's a non-starter. It, it'll, it'll crash and this can't be done with the way that the citizens of Bonnie Lake understand their government, mm -hmm. you know, because you're actually trying to create a separate government entity. You're going to turn around and say, oh, well, that's actually your council. It, the whole thing, <laughs> because I was there. I lived Don't talk there. to me. Talk yeah. to your council member. <laughs> you you yeah. are my council member. Wait a minute. You don't choose a party. You, know, you literally got a two thing. It's it's a gigantic mess. But Kelly can probably speak to it better. But you know that that was a, a it was a gigantic disaster on epic proportions politically. It's just yeah yeah. It's uh, <clears throat> I I was it, if somebody <laughs> wants to understand the motivation for voting against it. I was 
part of the coalition to defeat that effort. And we worked very hard to defeat that. Um, and we found um, that was actually a very painful process, right? Because people have deeply felt beliefs on both sides of this issue. I, I don't think it would pass. I don't think an MTD would pass in Bonnie Lake because we've polluted the waters, right? Um, I think you could maybe you would have a better chance at passing a bond, especially if you if you took it to the people and you said, "Look, we know the MPD didn't work, um, but would you you know here's the project we're going to build, and here's how much it's going to cost. Would you tax yourself for that? We understand that we're doing this because we understand you don't trust your government because you got to realize seventy percent of Bonnie Lake doesn't trust your government, right? They like they like the police department. They're, they're, a lot of them are like me. They love the police department. They love the, the sewer and water, the services. They appreciate the hard work, but they're afraid that once you create a government entity that it's just gonna continue to grow. And so the MPD was just, that's exactly what motivated most of us to work hard there. If you wanna talk to me about it, I can, I can share more with you about it, but um, you know, I think the MPD, uh, you know, if we wanna do that, that would be something to pursue when all else fails. I think the, I think we have other options to to consider uh, a, a bond by the people, a B and O tax. I think those things are reasonable ways to fund it. The a question I have is, what does it take to uh, change the park impact fees to be what was in the um, master? What's in the master plan? Because uh, if we're at four thousand now. That's 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 a big, you know, that's less than half of what it should be. And in my opinion, the multifamily needs to be more than the single family, um, because multifamily is going to be a larger impact on our park than that, single family. That, that multifamily is per unit, right? Yeah. Right. But still, per unit, they're they're going to tend to be a larger impact just because of the, the transient nature of the multi, the multifamily areas, right? That, that you know, they're gonna need to get out, they're gonna need to use it, where a lot of the single families will, will be uh, different. Anyway, uh, th thanks Justin for your presentation, I think it's good. So how do we change it? What's the fastest way to change it so our park impact fees actually reflect the numbers that were in our plan? Well, if you even do that now, you're going to have to be at fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars to offset the seven years we've been doing it underfunded. Well, why yes. wouldn't we do that? Yes. We already have everyone saying Bonnie Lake's too expensive to build in. <laughs> Forever they've said that. Yeah, but it has. To, it, I don't know what Pierce County uses or anything. Whatever he is. Yeah, or somebody around, you know, what does Auburn or what does Sumner charge or, you know, I always like to look at the surrounding first and say, well, so before we talk about raising the rates. Because of the school district fees, we try to keep consistent with, you know, whether you're in Pierce County. Or... That's the first thing. And then, then I can say why we shouldn't charge what they do and charge more. <laughs> Is there any county money available? That was the other thing I didn't see in here. Is the, is the county yeah, willing to? Uh, uh, well, well, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm working on that, Kelly. Um, there's a couple of things that yeah I wanted to bring up with it. Uh, so talking about revenue, um, and b before y'all uh, tease me about uh, uh, working through a golf tournament, I'll tell you that. Uh, that golf tournament was about uh, 50 degrees outside and we were getting rained on and it's perfectly miserable out there. <laughs> but um, um, I did go to the uh, JBLM uh, community outreach um, meeting uh, two Thursdays ago. And the thing that struck me more than anything was that JBLM has uh, created a, uh, an alliance with every city in East Pierce County, but Bonnie Lake. It was actually rather embarrassing looking at that map and saying that we didn't have any sort of connection with um, uh, with JBLM. And they, we have a lot of personnel that live in the city. 
Uh, so, and when I uh, talked with, uh, I can't remember his last name, but Colonel Phil about this, he's been saying he's been wanting to join up with, uh, with Bonnie Lake for a, long, for a while, and, and we've been silent on the issue. So, um, just as an example, um, reaching out, um, seeing what uh, the, their community outreach um, uh, programs are like, considering that it does affect their personnel, we're looking at, a, a, I don't know if it's a significant revenue stream, but it's something. That uh, that we might be able to use. I do know that they actually uh, contribute to a before and after school care program. We talked about that, um, and uh, different uh, and different <coughs> ways of of, um, of going about that. So it's uh, like you know, those are the types of things that we that we have to do. I'm keeping, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've met with Bruce Dammeyer once, uh, you know, and Dave Morell is a constant uh, contact here to get us back into the fold of Pierce County so that we can take advantage of some of those uh, uh, funds that, that they have and, you know, and looking at county grants. So, uh, you know, Kelly, I, I would love to meet with you one-on-one -on -one at some point so that I, you know, to talk about you know, when you spearheaded the uh, the Metropolitan Parks District, I would love to know why, you know, so that we can try to work around that in, in a way that, uh, you know, that is uh, acceptable to all of the citizens so that we can actually get some of this stuff done. So to answer your question, we're trying to reach out to go beyond city limits to, uh, to help uh, uh, bring in more revenue other than just B&O and, um, uh, um, and bonding. So, if you're willing and you are COVID-free, yeah. <laughs> it'd be nice to meet sometime. We did look up fees. Uh, Sumner is twenty-seven sixty-three for a single-family unit, two thousand seven hundred sixty-three. Multifamily is two thousand three hundred seventy-one per dwelling unit. Commercial is one thousand three hundred eighty-six per thousand square feet. Industrial is six hundred and fifty dollars per thousand square feet. So I think Tom, that gets to your question about where they're yeah. getting all this money to, mm -hmm. to do that park down in Sumner, and then mm -hmm. accessory dwelling yeah, units. That's fifty. Real area that we're that's not building. Well, Sumner's building that's two more parks. Piece, right? Yes, one time piece. and a pavilion yeah. down there for using for events after our events. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they've wrong. got they've got the tax on the on the. Industrial area too. Well, exactly. I mean, they have. Which we they, need they, to do. They have a large industrial area, bringing uh, income into them to a, a citizenry that's around 7,500 people. Where does, where does that income come from? It's it's not, it's not really the industrial, mm -hmm. uh, the industrial tax it, that they have. Yeah. Uh, what what it does bring that? It's well, a that, B, or not a B and O. What is it's the it's like the park impact fee that we have. Yeah, is they have it for for uh, commercial, but that's, that, that's the one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and if we don't do that, yeah. I agree that yeah. something we should look at. Yeah, uh, we need I, to do that. I've got a couple others. Uh, looks like Pierce County is thirty-two hundred. Bonnie Lake currently is forty-seven thirteen. Um, Duallup is uh, theirs is based on square footage, so under two thousand is thirty-two hundred. Over two thousand square feet is four thousand. So is four something? ours is at yeah. forty seven hundred. So we're higher than all of these, yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. that's why we're number. That's one. why we're not at ten thousand, is because we're already winning. <laughs> <laughs> we got to be on the top. That's not, a, that's not a competition I'd like to win. No, I know. <laughs> no, I know. No. So um, I'll throw out here. I met with uh, Doug Clevenger last uh, week. He works for Scott Knoll, uh, which is they kind of run. Mount Rainier Athletic Club, oh. um, and so we had a pretty good meeting. I think there's some definite interest in doing a private public partnership yeah. of some sort, but obviously I met with him one day last week, so we're not <laughs> very far into that. Um, he did want me to read this to you guys, though. He sent me this text last night. Uh, Mount Rainier Athletic Club, club of all activities through your local established soccer club, Mount Rainier Football Club. Would love to express interest in partnering with the city of Bonnie Lake in a short, medium, and long-term strategy. Short term, we would love to discuss absorbing annual maintenance costs at the new Allen York turf fields by becoming stewards of the fields. We believe our growing club of 5,000 current members from this region could show incredible pride and community 
with investment of people and resources from uh, Mount Rainier Football Club. We have many connections with local business people and think that a private public relationship would be kinetic for future growth. Medium, we would love to open discussions on how to partner with uh, public and private resources to solve boat trailer parking oops, uh, near the park this summer. And long term, uh, we would look forward to discussing a strategy to find solutions for a midtown park. Uh, MRAC could assist the region and not just the city with a vision. This partnership could possibly raise interest as well as capital to address uh, and deliver on community needs you have all worked to identify. You have currently paid additional, we have certainly paid uh, attention to uh, your work and we feel it's time to see how we can help. We are open to other ideas and discussions and we look forward to opportunities with the city of Bonnie Lake. So this is the group that's currently using um, the thumb area out there. Uh, yeah. and, right. uh, with with that, Tara, I know that prior to the interview that I had been contacted about um, yeah. uh, them coming in possibly uh, with the Parks and Rec uh, uh, program that we have. Has there been any progress as far as uh, them we're, us actually forming a partnership as far as the new redesign on the um, on the Parks and Rec and and, um. and Mount Rainier coming into it because that would be part of that private public uh, a coalition like Kelly was interested in and um, and which would be a success. So I um, mean, it's like if they do join in the fold, it wouldn't be as a separate entity, it would be part of the Parks and Rec uh, new redesign that we're trying to do. It's, yeah, I'd say that sounds uh, possible. Um, okay. It was just, you know, very early uh, conversation mm -hmm. at this point. But um, I shared with them the plan, well, I think the one that up there that uh, uh, Councilmember Evans had, uh, from 2015 mm -hmm. with the multi-fields in Midtown. Uh, um, and so they were, he was definitely interested uh, in that and, and looking at something to move. Seems willing to, because we were, we were just talking about how high the maintenance <clears throat> right. infrastructure would be a little bit. And, and, and that I, was one of the things yeah. that was like brought up. Yeah. yeah, I was just gonna, if I could Deputy Mayor just chime in here really quick, because that, that's actually, you know, that's great news to hear that there's potential for partnership. I mean, we'd enjoy exploring that more. Um, Public Works has identified initially for that new turf field capital need equipment-wise of about $20, fifteen dollars to $20,000 in some equipment that's needed. We're still working on what the year-over-year -year cost is and just materials to keep the turf field, you know. There's that granular material that has to be replaced every so often, and I'm sure Every once in a while, turf gets torn or whatever. There's that kind of stuff. So we're still working on putting that together. We I did identify a company that does this maintenance by contract, and it's a two-year contract. It's about thirty-five thousand dollars for two years of maintenance, and they just take care of everything: their equipment, their labor, materials, everything. It's and uh, so that's one thing we found out. Um, so if there's potential there, and maybe even if that could expand into future fields, I mean, all of that sounds great. Definitely something worth it. One thing I did want to make sure and throw out those we're talking about all of this is, and maybe this gets touched on later in city staff structure. So if I'm jumping ahead, feel free to go. Um, but um, uh, in a couple months here, I'm going to have one parks employee. So just, just throwing that out there, just to maintain what we do now, just to keep it at this level. I need a couple more employees. I need two more. That's why I'm asking for them. If we're talking about adding more parks, um, yeah, just throwing that out there. It's it's going to take a significant a investment. Yeah. So, just something to consider. Yeah, for yeah. I, I think that's why a, a public-private partnership of some sort is going to be so important moving forward. That's not to say we still need to do something. We still need to put money towards you know kind of stuff ongoing uh, as well. But we may get some help as well. And, and we're still going to have to certainly keep in mind, and I hate to be the naysayer in the group, but, yeah. you know, bargaining with the union. Uh, right. You know, right. this is work that would typically be done Absolutely. by represented employees. And if we're either looking at a public-private partnership, which I think is great, or, you know, contracting that out, mm -hmm. it's something we're going to have for represented employees as yes. well. Sure. Uh, yeah. Not a small issue, John. Not Appreciate a small issue. That. That's, that is that's like a big yeah. deal. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, they will see it as taking uh, union work away. Yes, right. Yeah. You saw what happened when I wanted to clean the <laughs> <That's laughs> yeah. contract. I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else get a phone call on guest here? This is about a recreation facility. Once someone wanted to build Bunny Lake. 
had a call yesterday from a couple. They labeled to Holly. They were looking out doing. Did you? Cause you I gave them your card. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to meet next week, so. Because, yeah, they're always love to go to the field. Something was. Right. Staff, and they go out for all the grants and everything. Oh, yeah. They do it all. Yeah. Might be a good partnership. Oh, uh, what were their names? I might have spoken with them. I gave him your card. I gave him his card. Oh, yeah. Angela, did you have something you wanted? Yeah, I just, um, I'm going to. Um, I did want to speak on the fact. I shot that. Um, and there wasn't a lot of information. But so exactly. that was an easy no for me. Yep. Very easy. I think a survey might be good. Just having a lot of information. Don't know that they're living in Bonnie. Do you know how many that people think true. they live in Bonnie Lake that don't? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In the backyard. Huh? Yeah. Um, but I, I was curious as far as because I have talked with um, Kathleen and private funding for like Midtown, um, and just asking say that it, it could get pretty complicated. I wonder if there is an opportunity to have multiple donors rather than just one and find a way for it to be, you know, fully funded privately. Yeah, um, and I agree. I know there's been conversations uh, previously with other organizations. I feel yeah, like there's some, some heavy too. hitters yeah. in Bonnie Lake and we've spoken to a yeah. couple of them yeah. and, you know, I feel like they are, they are willing to partner together with Bonnie Lake. It just would mean that there are Instead of just one donor taking on the entire mm -hmm. bill of a, a large project. Yeah. Um, and then with the BNO um, tax, it sounds like at maximum that would cover 20 million of the well, 60 million. Basically. Yeah, 30, 32 currently. <laughs> The projected future stuff. Okay, yeah, and so I just wonder, even with the BNO tax covering, you know, that, um, and then with the rest of that, if we have, if it's 15 to 20 million to build out Midtown, um, that would that would take away from just us having to fund for that, right? No, if we were yeah. able, if we were able to successfully have it privately funded, that that wouldn't and equate to the 60. Right. Okay. One but, of the ancillary issues that I'm uh, that I think needs to be discussed uh, by everybody is that uh, just like the problems that we're having um, uh, with the Paragon people in a local agreements that mm -hmm. we that uh, came along a couple of or a few years ago, if um, we were to outsource, for lack of a better word. Uh, all the prime companies. Now, I, I do know what you're talking about. We have a lot of master built uh, uh, c actual citizens who live in Bonnie Lake, mm -hmm. and they have they have the vested interest in um, in keeping it the way that it is. But what um, I would be a little wary of is them taking the ball and running with it with something that we did not originally and for. And and right now, like when I was looking at uh, the, uh, the 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 Sports complex that uh, that um, uh, Justin uh, that the comparables that we were looking at, and he was talking about hosting or you know potentially like hosting tournaments and whatnot. We don't have we don't have the collateral facilities to be able to actually host that right now. The hotels we have restaurants, but you know we don't have hotels yeah. for any of these people to stay at, and we don't really have the room to to invest in all of that right and you know this is a long i'm thinking long term when it comes to this but one one of the issues that i just want to keep us wary of is that there has to be a balance as far as um what they you know what all the private in, in investors want because you know because they're going to want a, a, a substantial return on their and it's not simply that you know they want to 
donate money to build a park because you know because they live here they're going to want something you know out of it as well i i agree with you but i i disagree in some some areas of that because i think there are people legitimately that are out there that are just looking for to create a legacy and, and it may be more than just a return on their investment well it very well could be but yeah. i am and all i'm you know, all I'm I mean, saying with it is that, that you know, we, when we go down yeah. this road, uh, it would be nice if we tried to foresee like all of the all of the issues like we're having with Aragon, like the fact that we make an interlocal agreement with one company that turns into a different company that we had no control over ten years in you know ten years in the future because he bought out that contract and it, you know and it turns into something that. Uh, uh, that yeah, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be in court, uh, you know, dickering over this for, so, you know, for a while. Yeah. So speaking, speaking yeah. to that point just a little bit, I, you know, I think there, there's, where that particular project is concerned, there's a lot of moving parts right now. Spot on, right? I mean, this was, that development agreement was something started with a completely different organization way back when, and then it got bought out. But I think it is important to illustrate that there is some some tools in the toolbox to potentially do uh, somewhat what you're talking about, Angela. The idea that, for instance, the property that we now have that we're looking to develop as Midtown Park was, and you correct me if I'm wrong, John, but that was basically given to the city in exchange for credit for mm -hmm. park impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. So depending upon how this project ends up washing out at some point, because right now one of the big issues is just exactly how much development can they really do. Let's just say hypothetically it lands at a point where they're going to do more than what was originally lined out in the development agreement. They may owe more hard impact fees. Well, maybe there's a place to do some horse trading, if you will, where, hey, in exchange for credit on those additional park impact fees, Tarragon, you can do more on this piece of property over here for the city. And then that would be shaped by an additional agreement, or maybe in its, depending upon the timeline, they'd have to move quick, an amendment to the existing one, or I don't know what that would look like right yeah. now, but certainly those tools do exist, yeah. and lots of cities do use public-private partnerships. It just has to be carefully crafted. Well, when I, I talked to them, I thought they were going to do that. When I, when I had an interview with them, I was talking about our parks, Midtown Park. I said, yeah, that's something we can really think about. So I thought they would come back telling us, we're going to do this and this and this for you to do this, this, but obviously it's a ways down the road. Yeah, they're good salespeople. They are. I know that. Yeah. I just I thought they would give us like you're talking about. I asked them that too when I when I met with them. I said, so how how much of the park are you willing to push out oh, yeah, for yeah, us? Right. <laughs> you want to build the park? Yeah, that depends on you want to go. So I, I first wait to see how much we're going to let them come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, you no, could, exactly. Right. Yeah. right, but like Mr. Mayor, you could always do things council like. You know, an, an outright lease, right, that some people do. Not that I'm suggesting any of this, but there's a lot of possibilities out there. Because if you own that 50, 20 acres or whatever, you can say, hey, Joe Blow, there you go. Five bucks a year and have at it, you know. But to your point, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. You, have, you lose all control at that point. Exactly. <laughs> so so it's, it's one of the things we just need to be aware of while we're negotiating. Yeah. And, uh, and make sure that we're just, uh, you know, we still have a say in it. I think with the with the private funding, um, I guess where it's even with um, boat trailer issues. Wendelin and I were talking with some citizens that responsibilities lie. You know, what what is the council supposed to be? So. I'm, I'm just curious as far as the private funding goes, is it something that the council needs to be looking for? Looking, are we, is it our, are we supposed to be looking out for private donors and trying to talk and negotiate with people? Or is that a city thing or is it both? Uh, so which, it's which not just step on city employees. employees. Yeah. <laughs> city staffing, and I think yeah. everybody's aware of my, you know, my desire to have a full-time that's where that's one of the roles they would be is you know instead of uh, contracting out uh, to take care of city issues, do we an actual full time city that would be in that negotiation process take the city's um, uh, best interest uh, uh, when they do that and they would be a fiduciary duty to the city and uh, councilman's club, not to the mayor. 
But anyway, and that's an issue that we had uh, literally later on. So, um, yeah. If I could, 25 minutes ago, Sherry was only on her second bullet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Of yeah. our funding <laughs> options here. So. Oh, I'm sorry, there's more? Yeah. So, yeah, there's more. We're not, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm uh, I'm glad you guys are having the conversation. I honestly, um, you've all looked at the the paperwork. You know that you have three options available: B and O, Metropolitan Parks, and the TBD. Um, the TBD uh, would start out at 20, I believe, is what I said, and you can go up to 50, but you have to have it so many years at one level before you can can gradually go up. Back to the MPD. Um, the one thing I was going to uh, comment, Kelly, uh, based upon your comments about the bigger government, you structure it so that um, you can only use it on certain things, right? So you want it to go towards capital, you're going to say we want it to go towards parks capital and uh, maintenance maybe or whatever else. Um, no recreation. You can structure the ballot measure so that it says what it's going to go towards. The problem if you expand beyond contiguous borders is the same problem that the city of Des Moines had uh, when the Metropolitan Parks District was formed. Um, and I think it's the borders of Des Moines and maybe part of Normandy Park. They did it for a pool district. Now they have to pay for somebody to run that. They're paying the council or the commissioners, I guess they call them. They have to pay someone to do the financials. They were asking me if I would do that back in the day and I'm like, no. Um, so you're having to hire a bigger government. So I think if you go outside of the borders, that's that's the concern is that your government does get bigger. Um, the Des Moines pool district is is in that situation right now. Now, if you fund it at say 35 cents instead of 75 cents, you're still limited at that 1% per year. So you can't go from 35 to 75. Um, so the citizens wouldn't all of a sudden get a huge tax increase one year. Um, they're still bound to the 1% per year after you set your initial rate. Do you really want to consider what that rate would be. That's all I had to say. I sure, and I completely agree, but you have to keep in mind, see, the way that this politically works is you go out there with a ballot measure and you tell the voters that it guaranteed that just exactly what you just said, right? You're at 35% and you can only go 1% a year and, and it can increase possibly to the 75, right? Well, well there's a hundred, when you're standing in front of a voter, you're saying this thing can go to 75 cents. They're only asking for 35 today, but it can go to 75 cents. That's the message that goes to the voters, right? And then that's why yeah. I scream about it being politically impossible. You're exactly right with what you're technically saying, but that's not what it's campaigned on. It's campaigned yeah. on a bunch of like extremism, you know, that's the problem. Yeah. And that's why right. it gets defeated. It, you know, I agree uh, that Metropolitan and, you know, the former mayor and everybody was on board with that. And it was like, it is the fantastic, mechanism to be able to fund that system. It makes complete sense. But getting the voters to buy off on it? Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it is tough. Day. And you know, I'm not I'm not championing one way or another. My biggest concern right now is your general fund. And if you fund parks before you fund your people, that's my biggest concern um, as your finance director right now. I agree hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say something because that leaves him, but um, in regards to the general fund, and again, I don't know if this, because, you know, when we're talking about the general fund, we're talking about how we're over budget. Oh, I you, am, I'm curious. I'm sorry, you keep cutting out, so I, I don't want to miss what you say. Take the owl more. Oh, you do. <laughs> of course, the owl. Okay, can you hear me, Sherry? Okay. Can you move, can you move <laughs> um, the owl closer? No. I think it's you could hear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am just curious as far as the general fund budget being, you know, I know that there's a projection right now, especially if we add on um, some of the staff requests that we're looking at 2 million, right, 2 million over budget. Um, and then when we have conversations about the general fund, the conversation is, you know, we are over budget, but then when we're talking about ARPA funds, right, there's so much money. And so my curiosity is because we shouldn't be in debt and we shouldn't allow this debt to be on the people because then we're asking for more money because we have debt. Um, 
I'm just curious if there's a way for ARPA funding to transfer to cover that two million. So right now we're not in debt. I'm just telling you we don't have a balanced budget. We have to figure out a way to balance it. You're correct. And yes, you can. Sorry, go ahead. But that's projected. Six or seven million dollars in our pending fund balance. So a loose term of so yeah. So look, we're not in debt. Look, can can I take a step back? Um, because I want to make sure that you fully understand um, what I'm trying to say. Because I, you know, I've been doing this budgets for 16 years, so it, I sometimes just, you know, take it for granted. Um, a balanced budget means that the revenues coming into the general fund are more than the expenses going out. We have an ending fund balance, and you guys can use that just like you did on the parks. Um, the two areas that would make the most sense to use ending fund balance are one-time things. Um, so, like your parks, your street projects, because your street fund is going to um, diminish in the next few years as well. Um, so, the ending fund balance of the general fund should be used on one time projects, whether they're, you know, general fund, parks, streets, whatever. Your revenues in and your revenues or your expenditures out need to balance in order to have a balanced budget. Can you use your ARPA money was a question. Yes, you absolutely can. It's one time money. So then you're going to need to figure out what you're going to do for the next couple of years. But we absolutely can use that ARPA money for the general fund. In other words, you could build a bridge if you're confident that, oh, my gosh, you know, there's 47 commercial establishments were coming online and we're going to get an extra five million dollars worth of revenue projected in 2024, 25 that you could use one time quote unquote monies to build a bridge. To yeah. That. I mean, I understand it's a bridge. I understand a balanced yeah. budget. We're I just, not using it as a bridge currently. Yeah, I know. But, but I, I, I still think doesn't that, doesn't that lack of balancing then roll into the upcoming year anyway, if we don't cover that cost? Yeah, because you all have to be, yeah, you're currently yeah. not, we're currently yeah. not out of budget. And we're currently using the ARPA only for one time. One time expenses. expenses only, that's all. Well, yeah, there, I, there was kind of a proposal. I, mean, that I work on a balanced budget too. <laughs> if there's money that projected to come in and earmarked for things, we have things that are earmarked that we don't have money for in the general fund. Right? Um, About two million. No. Oh, that's for the budget we haven't approved yet. Right, but it's going to get Correct. approved because we need. We need no. We have you can. We can. Well, you you have to have a balance. So, budget period that you set where you correct. steal the money from. Well, <laughs> correct. So <laughs> so kind of how the process is going to work. Money. A, a quick one minute conversation about the budget process. Um, so how that works is right now I put a call out to the directors and department heads to give me your list of wants and needs. Uh, come probably August is the soonest that I'll get to it because these aren't due until July 15th. So um, probably about mid-August, the mayor and John and I will meet to say, okay, if you gave everybody what they're asking for, this is how much out of balance you're going to be, Mr. Mayor. And the mayor's going to look at me and go, wow, Sherry, what are we going to do? And so John and I will have some suggestions on how we balance it from there. At some point, once it's balanced, we will bring that information to you guys and say, this is how much money we have left, or we don't have any money left. And these are the positions and wants that the department had that we don't have the ability to fund. And then it'll be a conversation with you guys with decision cards and what that looks like. So the, there is a specific date though, Sherry, you said kind of when there is a date that the mayor will present his budget to the council. Oh, that's normal. Well, October, it's due. Yeah. The budget is due by the mayor to the council the first Monday in October. Okay. So that, and Angela, that's when we see it officially is October or whatever. <laughs> sure you say. If, you if get I, a preview, but it's still official. If I may, we're talking about revenue streams, but we're not talking about cost cutting. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was the ERR Fund 501. Currently, a, a two-year budget is $7.72 million, and I know that split up over many, many different things in that fund. However, if we were to look at uh, replacing vehicles, I don't, I don't know, are they on a six-year? Depends on the type of vehicle. Okay. If, if we right. looked at vehicle replacement at either extending that time frame, putting a mileage clause in, 
something like that. If we, if for example, we bought a, a $50,000 vehicle and it was a five-year replacement, we're, we're, we're putting aside $10,000 a year for that vehicle for a replacement. If we change that to seven years, we're at $7,300 a year. And if you look at how many vehicles we have in our fleet, that savings over all of those vehicles could amount to a pretty significant amount. Now, there's some vehicles you just can't do that on. But I know there's some that, I know we have a really old pickup truck that we just keep driving around because it still works. Uh, uh, that's the one that just got stolen. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. All right. That I've got to, I've got to go rest for back. You know, oh, yeah. we're, we're kind of due for a rest break. Does it, break. Do we want to uh, rest yeah. for about 15 minutes and then reconvene or um, I, I, yeah, I'm just let you go the point real quick? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sherry. Yeah, uh, I can be real quick. Um, so I don't disagree with you, Justin. There is the opportunity to do that. Um, it's going to affect your water sewer funds more than it would your general fund um, because most of the vehicles in your general fund are only police. And I would not, and I imagine the chief would not recommend that you extend past five years on a police vehicle. And oh. I imagine Deputy Mayor Carter. <laughs> Correct. So it, it would save your water sewer a little bit, um, but it, it's definitely not going to save your general fund. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's take a 15 minute break. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, I got a text from a friend of mine who asked me if uh, uh, I got it. And again, I know it's going to say, yeah, I've got to get rid of those kind of things. Yeah. 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 USB extension cable. Yeah. Then I can just tape it down. Uh, but of course, then you'll need to set a yes. chair. Yeah. I need a chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman.
I got it. I'm just going to set this more in the middle, out of the way. Because I think it would be nice to use will encompass other things in state. I think it's still going to be more than like one of the things that I'm going to talk about. I know. 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 I
Yes, I'm not sure if this is. If we don't come back, I'm going to back up my email. Okay, I'll text. Yeah, yeah, text. Time to go back. I can have Got a pretty good
I mean, I've been on there a long time, but I hardly ever like go. Did somebody get popped up? Oh no, did somebody hack me? Oh no. No way, really? Really? Yeah. Where? Like, like people you may know, like the hacking of the friends. Really? Oh, I mean, I've had, yeah, I've had a thing up there forever, but I haven't like updated it or periodically I'll go in and see if like I never actually go back. <laughs> oh my god, that picture's like from 2009. <laughs> oh my god, I shouldn't really go back and see what's on my face. <laughs> I know, yeah. I was thinking about today as we were sitting here that actually the slaughter of the saga. One of, the, one, of the, one of the years was as a friend. You keep trying to do one of the time. She was like, Did she write it? It'll be like the last two years. Very quick. Very quick. More than one is not talking about it. And you want to add that to that's the big thing, right? It's like finding budget to do it. That's right? interesting. And then, of course, you know, I'm going to say, you know, like, 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 all right, we're going to get started with overall operability of vision. Vision again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to go use the best to my airplane. Oh, my gosh. I can see you doing that. Yeah. Oh, we got it in the middle now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. All right. Logo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I know where to put Angela's dots. So. <laughs> All right, and I are on the same we're, page. we're back, and uh, <laughs> I think we're probably done with this discussion. But I just want to make sure: is anybody else have one last thing they want to say on the revenue aspect before we move on? Well, is it revenue in reference to what? Any and all. Oh, okay. I would have another comment. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah. I don't know. If Sherry's available yet? There she is. Yeah, hey, Sherry. <laughs> I appear to be very large on your screen, so yes, I'm here. Um, I don't know if you know or something, but you know, revenue sources, of course, we always look at those things because you know, things like Sumner did at one point in time. This is the way back machine. Does anybody remember the commercial door tax? Um, so, what was the deal with that, though? Because that's like, you know, it was a tax on how many roll up doors you had, or right? But how can you do that? Because, you know, there was conversation about well cities can't do that but can cities like have magical taxes right it's like oh we're gonna we're gonna add 
50 cents to cigarettes, but there's a, you know, there's a regulation <laughs> that you can only do Tried that. Tried that one before, Dan. Well, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that goes back to history. Uh, I mean, the reason why in Europe, they don't have closets. They have armoires because they would be because they would be taxed in every room closet, in the house, right? Yeah, and the closet, closet was considered a room, right? And, and the city's the yeah. one who came up with that. Yeah, but that's why. So, I was, like, you know, <laughs> my point was, I don't know if there are other bizarre things out there. Not that I would suggest, but maybe there are because you know, to me, to um, maximize the commercial corridor that we have, and that we have this public that outside the region comes in there and does things. So that's where you get your bang for the buck that doesn't affect the citizens much. So if you're able to say, you know, well, I'm going to this, right? You know, you're going to put a 50 cent per latte cup tax on, but yeah. how can the, does any, how does well, the cities even do well, that? Can they even, I can why, can, a, why can some of their tax doors? And, well, Tacoma taxes bullets. It's completely something that they can do. Well, how? Is that just something you can invent as a city? Yeah, you can just say, I'm going to tax roses. Yeah, sure. no, they yeah. do. Find out what's yeah. popular in your community. Yeah. Yeah. People want their bullets. Yeah. The city of Tacoma did a five cent tax per bullet and a $50 per gun sold. Right. So, so I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing that because those things are out there. Right. Who knows? Yeah. You know, think outside the box, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm down with the with the, the coffee tax, you know, the, the coffee cup. No. <laughs> <laughs> five, five cents per coffee cup? Where are you? Yeah. I know, right? Me too. You buy four of those, you can get a, a Mr. Coffee Pot. The, <laughs> the mayor is listening, so why should he be trying to get out? Yeah, I know. How much coffee do you drink? So you could charge me a penny per straw, and I'd probably pay it. I'd be like, yeah, I'll pay that penny. Just give me the straw. Those, those kind of weird. How about 10 cents? I mean, Seattle does the soda tax. I might, actually, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm that Seattle addicted to straws. Uh, I love all straws. All non-diet <laughs> sodas, they, they added a... So any even at Costco when you're buying syrups for your your fountain machines, they oh. had that tax. So they raise more money than they planned on too. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, to go towards health issues. Well, yeah, well, there yeah. you go. So Was there that the are a lot tax? of options. Yeah. I don't like that tax. tax. But yeah. what yeah. people ended up doing was driving yeah. across the yeah. bridge to Bellevue and buying. Oh, I know. Okay. So yeah, there's plenty of different options for that. Okay, he's done now. That was King County, though. Can we, can we turn the road out to Tahale to a toll road? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Yeah, you know, in a serious as a heart attack, that'd be great to do. Yeah. You know, I don't know how they would do that. <laughs> they do it because, yeah. you know, yeah. you do it electronically. They do it today. You know, the technology is... I don't know whether you can do it. Who the ballards from? We like our own little good to go pass. You know? yeah. We don't even have to stop them. They just yep. let's be realistic. We can't even use charge credit cards on parks and rec fees. Yeah, you think we're going to do a bridge toll? I know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to upgrade another eight hundred thousand dollars of Eden. Yeah, exactly. Right. Tyler module. Yeah. No Tyler. All right. Uh, anything else? Um, I was thinking. Um, I, I was kind of discussing this, but I, I don't know if this is the time, so you can just shut me down. It's fine. Um, so my question is, like, we've got all of that. Maybe this is for later on, but we have all of that property out by, um, which is supposed to be the downtown area. Yeah. So should we talk about yeah, that Yeah, that's coming up. That's okay, coming that's up. Nice so uh, okay. we'll, we'll talk about that. Oh, Actually, shut my put button on my lips then. <laughs> uh, okay. So good. you good with that? Okay. Um, We've talked a little bit uh, about lunch being a working lunch here in a little bit. And there's a very open to get out of here earlier. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, so next, we'll move on to the five-year master plan for the city. Mostly has to do with downtown. So I did include downtown, downtown plan that's in our um, comprehensive right now. This was done a while ago. 
2017. But I think the original downtown plan was right. But the original plan was Dan. If you remember, was it 07? Which version? Yeah, which version? <laughs> it's pretty dated, and that you know that plan. Eventually, the thought was uh, you know that we create a downtown civic center campus that we relocate the senior center. That time, possibly the food bank, I believe, uh, the library, and build build basically a, a large civic center campus in between what's now you now the justice center and the public safety building. So we began acquiring all those properties. Uh, there's a, uh, a depiction here in the in the in the comp plan, and also we presented that I think a couple of weeks ago the, the list of city owned properties. And so you know one of the thoughts was as Sadie said this was done in 2016. Uh, one of the thoughts was that we had budgeted money in this biennium uh, to redo the up downtown plan, to, to revisit it, because now that we've got the Justice and the Municipal Center, now that we're new, building a new public services center out in East Town and the third floor, all the permitting staff will be vacating that. You know, how relevant is this plan, you know, given where we are at today? Well, however, keep in mind that we just had Jason remind us, you know, Tuesday night that, you know, the proposal we have right now is to take that. 125k, I think we had for the downtown plan. Combine it with the midtown planning, park planning money, and redo a parks plan. So, you know, I, I guess it depends on you know what the council's policy direction is as far as you know. Do you want to use those funds to you know redo the downtown plan, or you know, are we going to look at commingling the funds and do a park plan? Well, do we really want to do a downtown plan? The, have we changed? Because things are so expensive right now. Trying to get things developed. You know, mine started lately thinking we lease that property out and get some apartments in there or something. I mean, that would be such a great spot for apartments, easy access to it. They get some more income to it. We can't afford to move the senior center. The library hasn't done much about moving their location over there. Yeah, and, and that's why we were suggesting revisiting the downtown right. plan and so that's seeing what, if this is really the current That's model. my thoughts right now. That really, I don't think we want to do that. So, well, my my thoughts on that is we have all of this property here that we own, and we're talking about how we don't have any money. Uh, you know, we need to come up with more income sources. So my thinking is we design the look of the downtown possibly that we want, but maybe have a park in the middle. But what we're going to do is we're going to sell all that property with that vision in mind and make it commercial. So then we have a park in the center and we have parking all along the outside of the buildings. Then we have our restaurants, we have boutiques, we have little uh, shops so that parents can bring their kids to the park and then they can go get grab a soda or ice cream cone and sit at the picnic tables uh, that these businesses have paid for just like a development pays for their own park for their neighborhood these businesses when they purchase that property they have to build according to the look and the feel that we want that we have come up with which i think should be more of a hometown feel not a an industrial um feel you know just something territorial that kind of matches and then that park in the middle could have one of those rubber mountains that the little kids can climb up like what they have at the at the, which is waterproof and they have those at all of the shopping malls inside the play areas um easy to sanitize and keep clean and the businesses could maintain that so now we've sold that property we have money coming in that we can build up our reserve and possibly use a portion of that for parks for midtown um, then we also have income coming in because we've made that commercial. And then I think we should look into possibly making a tax um, per square footage that would go towards parks. So when we're building out East Town, we, we're going to get money just like Sumner, where um, you know if we're charging per square foot, then we get a small amount of money that can go into our parks fund, um, and then also for the in for the businesses, we get a small amount of money that goes into the parks fund, but then this is also bringing in revenue so that we can build up our revenue without affecting the citizens and also give us more money to be able to pay and get the workers that we need 
and support the city. And we want to be a big city, but we don't have big money, you know, to become a city. So we make it a city. We make this commercial. We sell that property and um, we make it what we want it to be. So that's my thoughts on that area. And, and so that's exactly the proposal that's in your current budget. Is okay. We had allocated 125000 to re-envision this downtown plan that was done way back when and most recently updated in 2016. The decision is... Deputy Mayor said, you know, we're not making decisions here today. Right. The decision before you next Tuesday is, do you take that money and put it into a park plan? So if you vote no on the park plan, then we have funds to re-envision the downtown plan. If you say yes to the park plan, there's no money to re-envision the downtown in this by any means. Is uh, ARPA potentially something we can use for that? <laughs> for the downtown yeah. plan? Well, for the parks plan. Yeah. For parks, for mm -hmm. sure. Cherry, are you there? I know. Well, we talked there. We so talked about one time. Was, was earlier. There she Sorry, I'm here. I was over looking, uh, researching just a nice conversation about cigarette tax back in the day. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can you use the money for a plan? Um, yes. Um, yeah, I, I I think I could support that, yes. Because we could circle it around as lost revenue replacement and then use a juggle fund. Yeah, uh, recreation, yeah, yep. City, so we you can know, do both. that would be giving back to the community. Parks yeah. and downtown? I think you could, if I'm understanding correctly, you could, Sherry, you could use the ARPA funds to supplement lost revenue and then use that lost revenue to in turn fund a parks plan and a downtown plan. There we go. Both with our does it one time thing. Yeah, like so Brandon. Yeah, I mean we wouldn't call it. Yeah, sure. You know yeah. we would call it lost revenue replacement. Right. And just kind of move the. Yeah. It, it, it's a good thing uh, John is not a CPA. That's not how I. <laughs> it's not how I run <laughs> <laughs> things. <laughs> got to move the money around. Can we get a discount for combining the two? <laughs> he kind of sounds like a shady <laughs> CPA. <laughs> well, I got a deal for you. <laughs> I'm walking on the line. That solves that, I think. Yeah, it, well, we've decided well, we want to do it downtown. We want to keep it to retail or just lease and do out like a public place. Well, and, and that would be part of, of the plan the planning plan. process that we would go through. Because clearly, I mean, this 2016 plan, we're not going to do that. Right. No. I mean, no. I, I mean, just throwing that out there, I think that would be a great place. Currently, where the Civic Green area would be for a veterans memorial. There you go, right? Somewhere, yeah. somewhere in that area. Have you area. heard from the library at all? We can make idea? that part of the park. Too, you know, a couple of years now, and have a flag in the middle yeah. of the park, and then that could also, if we have businesses there, then in the winter time when we're having Christmas celebrations or whatever, we can have all the businesses from all over Bonnie Lake bring in little tables and kind of like a Bonnie Lake days or whatever. Um, they can supply arts and crafts for the kids and hot cocoa, and we can have a big Christmas tree lighting, get together at the park, and you know, just uh, make it a wonderful community area to bring the community together. Speaking of challenging with the retail stores there, the way the location is at, get traffic in that area, but even my own retail background. They use the sealer areas of smaller ones, getting people to the area they go where most places they can shop at one time. And you're going to have some small boutiques and stuff. I don't think you're going to have enough traffic for them for the survival of really concerned. We've got to have nice. businesses, though. But, yeah, I mean, we have to have, right. like, restaurants. We need nice, good family restaurants. You know, Just we so don't space we have, have a lot of that. Time. So, and then, of course, parking on the outside. You know, with the park being the center of everything, and then the businesses can build that. That's part of their part of their tax for doing business is to put that park in the center. They can maintain. Right, downtown but, needs to be down at the WSU Forest. We need a steak restaurant from Costco someplace. Mm -hmm. I know, right. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm getting a little deep in the weeds here, guys. <laughs> okay, well, it was just my thought that, you know, we have all of this property, and we're not obviously going to do anything with it, so either sell it 
or make it a business, you know, or something with it so that we can have we some of that out, money we come in. Ongoing money too from it also. Yeah, mm -hmm. but when we're leasing half of our businesses, you know, for a dollar a year, it doesn't really bring in a lot of income. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that, that would be know, part of the planning process yeah. to you know re envision the down where we want to go. So again, I mean there's money in this biennium to do that and well, fabulous. Planning commission. Anyway. Oh, consultant. Consultant. Yeah. Yeah. And, and working and through that public that process and mm -hmm. doing surveys. So Tuesday, okay. we don't have to decide so, that sheriff said we can use the money for both then, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to give it parks or that. We can do both. Yeah. Right. With our permit. Decision on Tuesday is one coming from Jason asking if you want to use currently the 125 for yeah. just the parks plan or not. Because that's what was discussed at the workshop. Okay. Then we can right. do a future one for the downtown plan. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. Anything else? It was easy. That was solved that problem. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. raising like the roof. Yeah. Knocking this thing out. Well, we're going to talk about any more properties at all here. What's going on with all the properties we own then? Uh, it wasn't on your agenda, but I'd prefer okay. to the new mayor. Well, I, yeah, uh, we, we, just, had, we, we just had, had presentation that. a month ago, maybe? Yeah, I think that was, that's what I was going to say. We just had yeah, 10 minutes before lunch. The conversation. But, I mean, right. Yeah. Instead of going know, to the next thing. Yeah, we can talk about it for a little bit. The REIT property, I know we keep talking about it, and I know it's been listed, but no one's doing anything active with it. What What would it take to actually sell that? Is someone coming towards us, or do we? Dave Morell has come has approached us a couple of times on the REIT property to make that a trail bid for the, uh, uh, and I forget the name of the trail, but. Uh, that was just a small piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then he, there, he's also been talking to the tribes about a cultural resources center. Yeah, like and that. I've gotten I've gotten two different words on having to have somebody there uh, working with, with Dave Morrell saying, "Oh yeah, I've got that all under control." And, uh, <laughs> so I have no idea where, <laughs> where so that's going to go. So you have surplused it. We yeah. did that years ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. you know, it's not actively being marketed. If you wanted to go out and you know solicit a real estate firm to you know actively market it, you know we certainly could do that. What, could it be developed into homes like what's next? I think it? it's a five-acre zoning district. I think. Okay. So those were legacy oh, plots so back from the '90s, oh, legacy okay. subdivisions. So, okay. So no, you could not do a big subdivision like oh, okay. that. I think it's five-acre tracks. Okay. Yeah. If you could, that's that's yeah, worth so trying to sell it off right, right now. Well, right. nothing's yeah. going on. It'd be nice to actually try and sell it. Then. At least get yeah. something going on, possibly. Talk to years about doing something for property, you know. <laughs> anyway, but ho hopefully that deal, Mr. Mayor, goes through, right? You know, that yes. is. Heavy idea. There, there's a possibility to cure a lot of things with the county with that deal. Well, yeah. absolutely. And there, currently we do have a bit of a, um, a non meeting of the minds as far mm -hmm. as this. Yes. Uh, how much is it that that he's talking about that we owe the county? Two hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah, two hundred two twenty-five that, yeah. yeah. 200, 225 yeah. that we yeah. supposedly owe, owe the county. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, we're stating we don't. Right. So <laughs> where is that for? Yeah. Um, that no, was one ninety-eight waterline relocation. Right. Uh, and and he was trying to make that part of the deal. So right. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. You know, that would be a great win because that's a pain. I don't know. It's not too terribly a pain, but every time the City has to do work outside the city on utilities. They have to get some kind of I don't know extra. Yeah, and just our staff. utility and good standing yeah. status has been revoked since twenty oh, okay. yeah. fifteen. Yeah, fourteen, fifteen, something 15. like that. Yeah, it, that, and that, that would cure this. That would. That would. Yeah. Yeah. Since Ryan's been here, you know. Yeah, yeah. the whole <laughs> time I've been here, utility not in good. Standing. So then that's all we have. Then we were Midtown's come up here in the near future, and that's all we really have to worry. About. Yeah, I mean, there were the handful of the other parcels we went through the map. I think we checked on the one down. Yeah, that's the access. Yeah, so that was an access road to that larger parcel to the east that right. I know you had asked about, Terry. You know, there's the other duplex rental uh, down by the high school. Eventually going to be a road extension. 
for downtown properties. Yeah. Like five minutes before lunch. Oh, is it over there? Well, she hasn't. They're not lit yet. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, they are lit. Yeah, oh, they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're alcohol. Lit. Don't oh. stick your fingers. Yeah, they're lit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. I, don't I can ask her if I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Then we can break it the next morning. morning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right here at two o'clock. Well, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. We, we all had the same goal in mind. We can be real. Right 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 yeah. well, Ryan, Ryan, relax. Ryan and I were talking. Remember the, the last one we did at Shenanigans? We got done so early and we had already paid for dinner, so we all got dinner stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, very short. Okay. Um, well, we can start, uh, uh, you know, Mike. and then uh, with staff structure, so we'll eat our way through. It. Sure, looks like that's the next thing. Staff structure. This is just trying to get counsel and our discussions with me. Well, what we had put in the packet were, you know, the org charts that were out of the budget, you know, yeah. updated with current names and in some cases the, the vacancies we have. I like how Chuck reports to Chuck. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, yes. Chuck does. Is that this one here? Uh, yeah, the yeah. next several pages. Yeah, there's several. And I know earlier, you know, in the PowerPoint presentation that Sadie went through about the number of recruitments and stuff, uh, you know, we just heard on, on Friday that there's probably uh, four retirements in public works coming up by mid-year. Also, uh, ongoing, you know, retirements and resignations. And, yeah. One, one of the thoughts, I think, in bringing this forward was the whole thing we did with the raise as far as looking at what Sumner was doing and how those uh, jobs maybe were different or titled differently or whatnot um, and to look and see if anything in our organizational chart needed to change right and I know some people are gonna be working out of class pretty soon and so like was it better to just move them up to a different position or to change job descriptions I, I, I don't so, know what that entails so I know one of the things that I've been talking to Debbie Mills uh, with you know prior to her departure with the city and, and prior to us adopting the new non-represented salary table was actually she had a proposal on the table to bring in a consultant that actually you know specializes in job descriptions and parables and things like that and holistically look at all of our job descriptions look at pay grades figure out what the appropriate comparable cities are see if we need to I know like for Candace's job right now currently with what she's do all of the hiring for that position is ten thousand dollars per month. Well, and that seems to be what it seems. One one of the things that I'm worried about. Well, actually, two things. Uh, the first one being that a lot of our structure in different ways has actually put us out of compliance with as what we are mandated to uh, uh, employ that we haven't so far. And uh, we do have to, uh, and I obviously that's my primary concern, that, uh, to where we're uh, compliant with our code. Uh, second thing being is that right now we are non-competitive. I think we are uh, uh, paying less than all of our surrounding revenue, which is uh, one of the reasons. So, you know, we have a lot of employees that are frustrated with what they're doing because they're doing a lot of out of scope work and they're not getting paid enough, as, as, you know, as the, uh, 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 our surrounding area, so that's uh, you know, no wonder we're having all the exodus. That well, the just we're did the salary adjustment, though. So, which we well, we did, we did a temporary salary adjustment. Uh, that money is not coming back to us. No, it's not. <laughs> no, 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 that is no, that that's quite true. But it was, you know, this is something that we're working into the budget cycle, but uh, we. We have to take into account that uh, uh, the fact that uh, when I came in four months ago, several employees um, were doing 
thing or doing uh, duties outside of your scope of work. And as we pointed out earlier, uh, no matter how talented our employees are, and they are very talented, if you if you have them do like three tasks when they're only hired for one and they're an expert in one, all three tasks are going to suffer uh, because there's only a certain amount of time in the day. And it's um, and some of these uh, uh, and the thing that I'm worried about is that some of the uh, uh, positions that uh, we just had even a couple of years ago have been absorbed as opposed to refilled. Um, and and they're you know and that that's just not a solution to what uh, we have to get done in the city because we're starting to suffer uh, you know as as a result of that and um, and even in the four short months I've seen I've been here I've seen a couple of um, uh, uh, litigation uh, uh, problems that that we have that perhaps wouldn't have if we uh, if we had everybody working in within their scope of work. And we had a solid, uh, and we had a solid foundation. And as was pointed out in the meeting earlier, we need a solid, solid foundation in the city hall before we can actually. Uh, Ryan was pointing that out. You know, we're talking about parks, but we're not going to be able to maintain those parks if we only have one parks employee. You know, we got to look at we we have to take all of that into consideration. Uh, planning, uh, you know, planning all this and. Really, you know, you know, this is not a meeting to actually uh, uh, solve anything. It's, it's something that we're here to discuss. So, um, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there that uh, you know, that at, at City Hall, as as how they're functioning right now, uh, we're getting better, but um, uh, but we need to get solid. We need to get stable. I guess stable is the best word that I can think of right now. And we need to get competitive because um, even if we do get stable. We're going to turn into somebody who the only people who apply for the positions that are coming in are going to be like new people out of college without any sort of experience. They work with us because you know the salary differential is uh, uh, is commensurate for what their experience is, which is none. They get experience with us. They take off and they go somewhere else, and we're in this kind of cycle uh to where uh you know we're having to hire and rehire and we're not and and we're kind of in this stasis to where we can't expand well so it, it's, again i thought we yeah. did the salary service yeah. so so, yeah. so we did for the non-reps non-represented yeah but we didn't take that deep dive into looking at job job descriptions and actually looking at internal equity so one of the things the mayor referenced was you all know we didn't fill gary lee's position so we apportioned out his duties you know basically across all departments i think with the exception of core and so what we had talked about doing again was, you know, doing a dive into those job descriptions, having somebody come in, look at the internal equity, and see if positions are appropriately placed on a pay grade scale as and, to oh, relatable and, positions. And you see, and I'm sorry, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but like with Gary being a prime example, we're here, we're talking about how we need to uh, uh, apply for all these grants, and we haven't been able to, to you know, to apply for these grants. Gary Leap was our grant writer. And uh, you know we we absorb that we're not having anybody who's able to actually devote uh, the quality time to to write it to researching and finding those grants to bring money into. It. Let me ask why did we absorb it if we had a position that was a well that position. happened before I came along I so I don't why know. why not replace him? Well that's exactly the, the position. Part of the reason was budget. Yeah. We but looked at, um, you know, when people leave, John and I have been, and most all the other department heads have been very supportive of looking at what our current structure and needs were and deciding whether or not that was a position that needed to be hired. And so that's how some of these positions got combined, or um, we would continue to recommend some positions getting combined uh, due to budget and due to changing of the positions and the needs of the city. Michael, isn't there also a concern with um, one employee? Oh, I cannot hear a word you're saying, Judge. Oh. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I was just saying that uh, some of the employees who are doing more than one job, one of the things that 
is of concern that it goes outside their job description and then we get into trouble with the union. Yeah, yeah so most of these jobs that have been combined, um, my example in my department, I combined uh, the finance and payroll accountant. And the reason I did that is because the needs of the city changed. We switched to a cash basis, wasn't gonna take as long to do financials and uh, I needed the payroll person to be on the accounting side and not the utility billing side. It made sense to do that. And I would still stand by it makes sense to do that. So there are times that it's going to make sense. There are other times that as the city moves forward, that may need to be looked at again. You know, in five years, maybe that won't make sense. So, you know, for instance, you know, parks planning, you know, that was something that we assigned to, to Jason in the planning department. You know, Jason does comprehensive plans. You know, that was something that Gary did. So it made more sense to have the parks planning effort actually done by planning. Yeah. Uh, facilities was under Gary. Yeah. Facilities is a maintenance worker position in the maintenance worker series. Why would, you know, it didn't make sense when Gary left to have a maintenance worker report to me as the executive. So we moved facilities over to public works. You know, so there are things like that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Leslie's job description is our man management analyst and executive assistant. I mean, a big part of her work is, you know, uh, looking at grants and things. And, you know, she's out on maternity leave now. And certainly, you know, when she returns, you know, we'll have be able to tap her resources and work on the on the grants aspects. So we used to have somebody where she in her position was the grants writer there. Yes. Um, when I first Brian, came on. Brian. Brian. Yeah. Brian so that, we, that shows how important yeah. that grant writing yes. is. Have them, we have Gary. We need to get at that point. I cannot eliminate that. Post Gary pre maternity leave, do you know how many grants were written? I do not know. I mean, a lot. Yeah. Oh, I mean, from Leslie. From Leslie? Help on a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, up to, up to, uh, on a couple of public works. But your non union folks, you can assign them all the duties you want, and there's no repercussions. Well, we, we do have an out of class policy, so for instance, there's no quality repercussions. No, you're saying there is an issue. Yes, there is so, so there's a policy about out of class pay. And for instance, you know, Chuck, we appointed him as the interim yeah. administrative services director position. Yeah. Yeah. So he, you know, gets the 5% bump yeah. Yeah. or the lowest. Sure. Pay grade on the position. Yeah. Uh, Shawnee is another example with the HR manager position being yeah. uh, vacant right now. She's receiving out. Of, she's not represented. She's receiving out of class pay. I don't believe we have any represented employees on out of class pay right now. The one in yeah, public works. works. Yeah. But no, there is a policy that talks about. And it's also in the collective bargaining agreement as well as if you're working, you know, in an out of class for more than so many days. Yeah, the union thing is a whole. Yes, but then there's a separate in. administrative policy for non representatives All that stuff just boggles my mind. I, at work, you know, I'm a, I'm a small business. I'm in a small business. I negotiate a time for my wage or a wage for my time. It doesn't matter if I'm sweeping floors, delivering things. Ten hours that I'm at work is negotiated pay. I don't have a job description. It's do what needs to get done. That's just, right. It's just mind-boggling that. Yeah. Hold on, you're still here for the same time. <laughs> Different. Yeah. Something. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it just, but that's I not don't. the way it works in government. Yeah, and that's why we're. It's like, oh, you asked me to reuse a pen instead of a pencil. I'm gonna have to think about that. Hey, I don't know how to use a pen. I haven't been trained on a pen. I was trained on a pencil. Pen requires like, yeah, more accuracy be... because you can't. See, there you go. All right. There's whiteout. But a lot of this is it's management <laughs> from your, you know, your oh, end, yeah. right? Well, it is, but then you know, we, because see, that's to me, you know, don't come to me as a council member and say, oh my gosh, I got all these issues with the union mm -hmm. because these tasks have been moved around and they have bona fide issues Absolutely. that they had to go for, you know, that's not on me as a council member, you know, right? That's like. So and I think that's that's why you'll see, you, you know, know, come to me with a request for that. We'll present to the mayor yeah. is. I, you know, you heard it in the earlier presentation. I mean, there will be FTE requests exactly. coming yeah. forward to you yeah. as a council yeah. member. Exactly. That, 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 that piece yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you see, now, where, yeah. where it comes to you as a council uh, member as well is is uh, substantive changes, like I'm looking at right now. Uh, and, um, yeah. of course, you know, we de I've dealt with different departments already and just making sure that, that they're working. Um, and not uh, and not getting to where it's impossible, but like as I think Pete, our, our, a lot of our council members just found out this week, we don't have a legal department. You know, it, it's it's organized in a way that that comes under the executive 
branch. And uh, and like I'm saying, with a um, uh, you know, where it does come to you is that I I think we have a real need for a full time uh, city attorney. And, and, and in fact, you know, the fact that we're sitting here doing this retreat, asking legal questions of our CPA when we should be having our you know our city sure. attorney answer those yeah. questions. Um, uh, that's where it comes incumbent upon the council that uh, you know that that we need to restructure it. Uh, come up with a, uh, you know, with a legal department, find a way to put it into the budget because, you know, quite frankly, now that we're a city of 22, 23,000, you know, that, that need is there. Right. And it's, you know, it's not like we can just uh, run on the same organization that we had when it was, sure. when it was put together when we only had 7,500 people. Um, so that's where it becomes incumbent on, uh, you know, for discussion. <laughs> And if we had the budget to do all that, it'd be fine, right? Yeah. But the, the, the issue I've heard is that we have this five hundred thousand dollar projected <coughs> or more. How do we deal with that? Well, that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, would you like to say something? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just learning. I'm just learning. We will leave your set. <laughs> because how does that work if you know I'm hearing these needs and you've rightly identified we need resources? You know, but then I'm hearing other people say, well, we have a five hundred thousand dollar gap. Right. Well, how does the, you can't have both or, or can you? I'm, well, it's how do you do that? How do you fix this? Well, we're first of all, we are, you know, we're identifying these issues. Of the beginning of us negotiating yeah, exactly. budgetary uh, budget cycle, yeah, um, and uh, uh, well, and at yeah, the risk of repeating myself, I believe that's why we're here to, you know, just instead of just identifying the problem, you, you know, we all put our heads together and sure. try to find yeah. a way to yeah. to um, possibly solve it, and or, or you know, look at, at what we can do yeah. initially. Um, yeah, so yeah. I'm just like. It, it seems to me like every time we need to make a change, we got to pay somebody $100,000 to do a study. And we got to pay somebody $100,000 to do a study on parks. We got to pay $150,000 for city planning. Then we have to pay $150,000, $200,000 to reconfigure all of the jobs and decide who needs to be doing what. Uh, is there a way that we can save some of that money so that we could put that towards the employees that you need to hire and, uh, you know, get the city workers involved in, in what they feel like their job description should be or is? Because if they're with the union, then they already have a job description of what they know that they're supposed to be doing. But... I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there because I'm just looking at, you know, three hundred thousand dollars that just went out the door, and we have a five hundred and sixty thousand deficit. You know, uh, possibly two million once we start adding jobs and 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 paying out more money to people, which I'm all for. You know, because I've always been concerned about, as I've said, you know, people wearing too many hats. Uh, people are getting burned out and you know I know with my job when they start throwing more and more hats in the ring for me to put on you know at some point it's like playing hula hoops with uh, you know some on your arms and some on your legs and then some on your waist and everything eventually like a house of cards is could, just going to come tum tumbling down. Fun. I can try <laughs> but you know uh, I don't think any of them would like to do that either <laughs> you know it's it's exhausting it's mentally and physically and so to, oh. people are are losing quality of life because they're they're not home with their families because they're not able to be at work during their scheduled work hours and so once you start stepping that to me is a pay cut when you have to sacrifice your life your family for your job and so um but 
part of that being said is, you know, $300,000 going out the door to do a study for this and a study for that, when to me, $300,000 could number one, make up for a lot of that deficit, or it could create like three new jobs. So that $300,000 real quick, if I can address it, um, that yeah. comes from a different fund. Uh, so that doesn't affect the general fund. So okay. that comes out of capital improvement funds. Um, so uh, the park ones coming out of the park fund, the capital downtown plans coming out of your governmental uh, capital improvement fund. It sounds like you want to use ARPA money for that. Obviously now part of ARPA money is going to supplant one of those. One of the things I wanted to point out too is that, you know, yes, you you do have these what appear to be fairly significant upfront one-time costs. The thing that's really starting to concern me with some of the things I'm seeing is that what is the potential for some more expensive, longer-term costs down the road? The example yeah. I'll give you, for instance, is Mike Englert and facilities. He is one person, one position in our facilities group, and I'm using the air quotes on purpose, um, who has to take care of all of the facilities, all of the building maintenance needs in the city. And we just added now a $20 million facility, five buildings, four buildings um, on top of that. Um, as the chief can tell you, his male officers just spent the past month using the female bathroom because the male bathroom was shut down for a month because Mike couldn't get to getting that bathroom, you know, the needs, the repairs done to get that bathroom open again. And, and we're seeing this stack up. Yep. Um, we're, we're reaching a point of failure. We, we yeah. Arguably, we've reached a point of failure. Yes, we have. Yeah. And, and it, it's, it's, it's uh, we're, we're, uh, we're getting to that point where we're beyond just being creative about, you know, how we're going to find something to get us through this initial point. We're, Yes, but you don't need a study to tell me that you need uh, more maintenance people. I think because uh, we we understand that. I understand absolutely. that. I think and though I think though that what we where we've gotten to though, because we have for years been spending so much time having people wear so many different hats that the lines have gotten blurred, but yeah. in, in some yeah. ways between who does what. Mm -hmm. right. And we've got to go back and really work on redefining exactly really who does who does what. Right. You know, and I think that's across the board. When you pay opinion. somebody, yeah, that, I agree with you, spend yeah, the money. Yeah. But when you pay somebody and somebody needs, they're trained to look at what most cities do. They're trained to look at what is the most effective way to use your money in your city. So if we have to, on occasion, do that, we're getting so blurred in our city right now with all these people covering everybody else, that might be the best way to go so we do it correctly. We don't spend the money, we're still where we are today. But so, at the so same time, when, when you something. do a study, the study takes time, and we don't need a, a we don't need two or three maintenance people, you know, three years from now when they finish the study. We know that we need those people now, and why, you know, pay for a study that's going to take a year, six months, or whatever to redefine the lines when we know what a maintenance worker does. We we know that we need to hire maintenance and to obviously approve to get somebody in line for interviewing processes and training processes because that in in and of itself is going to take two months. Sure, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Sorry. So, no, you're fine. Uh, so my bigger question is whether or not you choose to have a study on what jobs people are doing, are you willing to pay for it? Are you willing to tax the citizens to pay for this? Because these people are going to come at a cost. And I, I'm fully supportive of increasing our staff, but I need you to increase our revenues, which is exactly what I was trying to say earlier. If you're going to pass a B&O tax, I think you need to put it towards people and not parks. Yeah. I agree on that and to maybe take a small percentage of it to to go towards parks like one or two percent but the rest mm -hmm. i i agree um you know needs to go towards the need of running a city which is what we're actually here to do and parks is giving back to the community but it's not going to bring in the revenue that we need to um to do what we need. Well, especially if you can't sustain. Yeah, it's, have have yeah, it's not sustain, it's just sustainable if we don't have people, but also we don't have the income to be able to maintain 
the parks and keep them beautiful. And I want parks. I mean, I want them badly more than anybody knows, but um, at the same time, not at the cost of sacrificing lives. <laughs> Looks like we're going great for lunch. So, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, so I think this is a good spot to uh, do 10 minutes, grab lunch, and then. Kelly, Sherry, Chuck, Chuck, what would you guys like? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, a plate. <laughs> should, should I come down and pick mine up? Please, you can. Outside, Kelly. Oh yeah. Oh, is he still? Yeah. You're in town. No, no, no. I'm I'm at home. I just had a runny nose yesterday, and I took a COVID test, and it said I had COVID. Yeah, I thought you were home again. Are you a double dipper? What is up with that? Yeah, that's the second time I've got COVID. Well, when you fly. Every time you fly, you're, you know, at risk of COVID. Well, you probably yeah, fantastic. Well, hopefully, there goes Wendland probably. You know? Just tell us a favor, or do us a favor, and tell us the food is just really bad, and then we won't feel so bad. Looks pretty good from my point of view. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's not what you're supposed to say. We don't want it, but we were told. somewhere and then they could use the the garage where the fire stick car, trucks are and 
use that for the boats, boat storage and mm -hmm. police storage and take over that whole building. But like when you have toilets um, going, you know, from the ceiling into the police officers' desks, you know, doesn't make for a very, that's a hostile work environment. Yeah. <laughs> Dangerous. Problem. <laughs> yeah. So we got to have maintenance for that. <laughs> Ryan, what'd you figure out on those fish? I didn't. I had no idea what's going on there. I had public works go down there and get them cleaned up. Kind of weird though. Yeah. Just strewn about on the asphalt. There was dead fish. Yeah. yeah. Justin came across a fish massacre. Um, they were probably mad because they couldn't put their right. boat on the right. lake, right. so they decided to throw the fish out for you. <laughs> Something. Yeah, it was, what time was, that was like early morning on Friday, right? 4.30, yeah. What kind of fish, do you know? I don't, they were dried up. They were just sitting oh, really? on, the, on the dock, yeah. Or not even on the dock, on the boat launch. Wow. It looked like either someone dumped their bucket or some birds. Oh, hold on, I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, there's probably How many eight, fish were there? Eight or nine of them. Wow, bizarre. It's a rebellion. Speaking yeah. of which, do we have a game warden that patrols like taps on uh, here? Not on a regular basis. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Any chance we can turn this owl off? Uh -huh. I have it up on my screen too, and it just, I got a direct shot of cheap eating. <laughs> Close up. Uh, good for anybody. Like the cheese? Oh, I like the cheese. <laughs> You know the little thing at the top of your monitor? If you slide it over, you won't be on camera. I'm not on. Well, I'm That's talking to the owl. owl. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, I know I turn my camera off. Well, I have to go over it. Yeah, but if we're going to talk, there's a meeting. You hear it? Does everyone already do their talk? Yep. Oh, I'm I working on my dog. Uh -huh. Only got one more. <laughs> wow. Is that Morrison's idea? Which one? Uh, yeah. Probably. Eight back to Morrison days. He always did it. We were trying to do it building. Yeah. Some of us have hinted it was him that threw all those fish on the dock. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody got something to eat, so we'll kind of keep working as we as we go through this um, to continue that conversation. A, a consultant. Um, would look at what other cities do, right? Because we're not the only city, we're not, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. They should know a city approximately this size should have yeah. X, Y, and Z. However, our city is always just a little bit different than others, right? Because it has certain geographical features, the lakes, all that other things. So, um, and I just add, the, the one that, uh, you know, again, Debbie, the previous HR manager, had looked at, I think it was 20, 22,000, and it would be about four months. Okay. It was very in-depth with Cabot. Yeah. Very in-depth what? Sorry. It's very in-depth. They're a very good Cabot. Okay. Cabot now on associates mm -hmm. or something. Gotcha. Well, I, I think it makes sense. I, I think just like what we did with the Sumner thing um, and, and looking for the non-reps, it's important to look at where we are losing people to, mm -hmm. not just the old school idea of here's your comparables, 
but literally you're losing people to everywhere around us, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, and again, that was the Sumner model. Right. They, they looked at okay, you know, I don't know what time period they looked at, but are we losing people to Auburn? Are we losing people to like yeah, yeah, yeah. And we and we are so yeah. it's important to look at those as, as possibilities because you don't want to be the training ground for everybody else. It's it's more expensive to hire and train new people than to retain the people that you have. Well, that was yeah, that was my question. Is um, will the survey include any sort of retention studies as well? I mean, it's great to be able to recruit, but um, you know, are these people happy enough to be staying or? or are they doing the same, or are they experiencing the same problems we are? I mean, that would be up to us to develop the scope of work and ask the consultant what we want them to look at. Yeah. You know. But I mean, the other thing we're not talking about, we talk about money and compensation. But people don't always leave a job because of money. They leave, they leave a company, they leave their supervisors. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a morale issue and the management and leadership mm -hmm. aspect to this is probably, to me, more important and more of a factor of someone leaving. Than three thousand dollars a year. I agree with you. And, and we do that. do we do do exit interviews. You know, if the employee is willing. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And so that is our opportunity when folks are moving on to kind of dive into those. You know, what's the root of the cause of your leaving if they're willing to share that with you? Yeah. Have, have people been willing to share? Yes. Kind of what, yeah. Uh, yeah. What generally speaking, what are the, what are sure. what is it? I. I yeah. That was something that quite honestly Jenna was working on. Uh, I, I spoke to the last five people left, and there's a lot department. of the same. Do, do you do it in the them? Yes, mm -hmm. and there's just mm -hmm. supervisory yeah. concerns. Thank you. And so who, who are uh, the results of the interview shared with? Are they shared with the uh, department that they've transferred so that they can grow? That's traditional. They've, they've just been okay. accumulating. Because and, that, you know, I mean, it just doesn't solve it. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. right. Great concept, one of those perfect concepts. Right. Never works in reality, no. but it's fine. You got to do it. You, you know, it's a checkbox kind of thing. To be a Cause goal. Because if, if you're a career <clears throat> person, you are never, ever, 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 ever saying anything bad about the boss. It just sucked that you just left. Because oh, he was my. the best boss you ever had. Yeah, I tell you what. That number five is in, embedded in my brain. I don't think I've ever circled <laughs> one through four on any of these. Three. I, I, I might disagree with you. I'm, I'm a little outspoken, and yeah, probably, right. to, probably to my detriment. But uh, now you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I have burned a bridge here and there. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, every rule has to be but, stuff yeah. <laughs> there, I have to make sure one. that the survey okay. that they send me is anonymous before I feel safe. Oh my God. To yeah, good luck. <laughs> put my real opinion out there. Mm. Yeah. I know. I've heard. You know, from staff and. The big thing that they talk about is feeling underappreciated. Mm -hmm. And I know some of the problems with that is we don't have a policy of doing internal promotion. We have we have to, you know, go out, bid it out, or not bid it, but advertise it internally, you know, sometimes externally. They have to go through the whole interview process and it's it's they're the right person and they have the experience and stuff. We just like, you know, if I was working at Office Depot, you know, like they shouldn't have to interview that. They should be able to be promoted. Is that a RCW rule or is that a, a city policy or what? I think that's in the union contract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to, I was going to ask, are we, are we leveraging, you know, the concepts of unions is that they help you manage your workforce with training and with uh, certification of skills and validation of those things. Are we leveraging any of that as uh, are our employees leveraging any of that? There should be a, is there a career path for that's laid out that these, that they uh, unions helping people build so that they, they understand where they're going and they can take those skills to a different position in a different city, or we can we can recruit from other cities knowing fairly well what that position is. I mean, that's part of the value of that whole union thing, right? So. I know the union um, offers education. Uh, one of my employees took advantage of it. She ended up with a two-year degree and is currently working on her four-year degree free of charge through the union. 
Yeah, that's the, that's the value. Oh. I was just getting closer to uh, filling up one. It's just 500,000. We got that figured out. Right, right. I think we just eliminate any one of these pages. On. Well, We're good. Is that what it is? I think it, we need to look into their idea about the B&O tax, but not necessarily all of it is going to go towards the parks. Um, you know. Uh, hey, Sherry, on the uh, TBD, is that something that we could bond against for streets? I know it's street specific. Uh, yeah, you'd be able to because it would be a capital project. So, yes, you should be able to bond. That would be a potential 3.3 .3 million in, in streets for, you know, larger projects if we decided to go that route. No, over how many years? The TBD, uh, you, MPD was the 3 million. The TBD is not no, a project. No, it's, this, what, 240? No, it's two, two, 275, but that bonded against 75,000 per million. Would be 3.5 million. I see what you're saying. Three whole miles, Tom, of uh, sidewalk. There you go. That's a lot of miles. <laughs> if you chose to implement a B&O tax, um, I would suggest you go through the process of doing so, and then we can figure out how much revenue goes to each spot that you're wanting. Um, it's going to take a while to implement a BNO tax. It, it wouldn't be like tomorrow for sure. My only concern with that is if we dilute it so much, there's really there much of an impact. If if 200,000 is going towards finance or offsetting the new person, if, if uh, <clears throat> some of it's going towards. Well, I don't need 200. <laughs> no, for for because it's going to require at least one new position to monitor audit. Uh, claim all that kind of stuff, right? I mean, that, I mean, it's not going to cost that much. Covered. No, not 200, but I mean, you will need a new position. Um, you know, some of it's going towards streets, and some of it's going towards staff retention and parks, and you know, it's it's a it's a revenue, but you know, let's it's is it as impactful as if it were fully bonded against one particular go for project or department or something like that? I mean, $1.5 million is a lot of staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. And then we have, uh, you sent me over that, was it the S9? About some, some debt that's coming off? Schedule 9. Yeah, the Schedule 9. Yeah, the Schedule 9. Yeah. We have some debt coming off in the next couple of years as well. Mm -hmm. The revenue streams that's provided for that, is there any earmark for what that is and where that might be going? That will reduce your water and sewer rates. Most of that debt is water sewer related. Okay. So those are going to the soonest uh, any general fund debt is coming off, I believe is 2031. Right. <laughs> is the Costco light paid for? Mm -hmm. uh, that is the one, hold on, let me switch over, Justin. Let me get on that screen. I know, okay, so I don't have it open yet, but I can tell you it was the number two on the top. Um, LPGO no, it was the number one. The second one was, no, the boundary funding is not. That was your, that was from a long time ago before I started. Uh, your police radios and um, your GM, JMC. The first one, yeah, the 17. That's the one that is your street light one. Okay, Geo Bond Bongo 17. Okay, yeah, and that's yeah. coming off in 2031. It's like a band. 2031. Okay, right around. One of my favorites. <laughs> I thought that was only a five year. Is that not? No. We still owe 3.2 on it. That was on what? Yeah, but it's no, right? Really. <laughs> I'm pretty which, sure. I which one is that, Justin? The Costco light. That's Costco light. Yeah. Costco light. They can buy the one. Yeah. So your Costco light, you saw 3.2 million, and your um, JMC building upgrades, and uh, that was you still owe almost 5.5 million on that. And the Costco light looks like it's 283,000 a year. 
Uh, the, it changes a little bit, but yes, it changes. Okay. I'd have to look at the debt schedule, um, but it does change a little bit each year. Okay. Yeah, if we could just get rid of all this debt, that's 4.4 million. 5.14 overall. Yeah, I had a dollar for every time I said that in my own council. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So part of what you're looking at there, uh, Justin, the bottom three are not true money, but we're required to report them. Okay, compensated absences, pension liabilities, and OPEB payables? Yeah, OPEB, yep. The compensated absences, potential retirement payouts? Or, um, or liability? Um, people or are, some of it is sick. Pay, some of its vacation pay. Um, it, that number is if the entire city were to quit tomorrow, actually, as of 12 31 2021, that's how much we would owe everybody at that point. But a lot of people leave before they get vested in some of that. So, And what is line two on there? The LG, the LTGO bond refunding. That's the JMC. Um, when you guys move into the JMC, what was that, John? Twenty thirteen. Uh, built in twenty eleven. Yeah, twenty thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. So when you guys moved into that in twenty thirteen, and this isn't on your packet. This is something Justin asked me for this morning, and I sent it over to him. Um, but you can see it. Uh, I know Council Member. Um, no, no, Deputy Mayor T Terry has it. Deputy Mayor Terry Carter has it. Um, it was in your financial uh, statement that I sent you, um, but it is also available online. So that one is uh, the JMC upgrades because it's my understanding when you guys moved into the building, it was supposed to be commercial space and it was not intended to house the government. And so you guys spent money to do those upgrades so that the city could move in there. I refunded that debt in 2015 because it saved us a significant amount of money. Oh, okay. Building things like a generator, and that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Generator with materials. And the offices aren't built out the way we need them. Like ours is not really. In with what? <laughs> Our we on goal review now, or where are we at right. on the agenda? Lunch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're still on staff on structure. Lunch. Yeah, we're still on staff structure. I tried to get okay. a buzzer door, and uh, boy came down to inspect and kind of look, and he's like, you "Guys are not even in compliance. We are missing signage for exit signs. We don't have enough spacing." We are not in What grandfather did at the time of the building versus what the code is now? Doesn't matter. No, I get that, but I mean, we we didn't build it out of compliance. No, it was built for a coffee place. As far as I was aware, our office didn't technically see that, so it's just like the way we. Oh. Okay. All right. Well. I'm going to I'm gonna ask you a question like I do in regular interviews. Is there anything here that we haven't already talked about that we still need to talk about in regards to the city staff structure? I mean, it ties in with everything. Revenue stream. I mean, right. I, I hate yeah. using the, word, the term revenue stream because it's really tax, taxation, right? I mean, yeah. city outside of utilities. We don't revenue. We don't generate revenue. We steal people's money, or we 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 take people's money for services rendered. I guess is, is the proper term. So <laughs> we just do it forcefully. They don't really have a choice. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this wouldn't be the first time I was in handcuffs at a retreat. Like, oh, wow. No, the first. <laughs> no, I was not at that retreat. So, you were at that retreat. Dana handcuffed me and put me in an arm bar and 
it's not pleasant. I never brought up the budget of the police again, and I haven't. <laughs> um, but I mean, we, we still have to look at how can we reduce costs. I mean, everything that's on here is absolutely needed as far as you know the personnel, but there has to be some sort of cost reduction options out there. I, I don't know what they are. I mean, I talked about the ER and R, and you know, it might save some money on the, the uh, enterprise side, maybe not on the, the general fund side, but there's gotta be some sort of cost cutting out there that should be available or at least considered. So having put your budget together for the last eight years, um, I can tell you that we have been very good about making sure that uh, ex expenditures don't increase much at all. Um, we've brought the decision card process forward, so that's a guarantee to show you if there is going to be an increase, you understand what it is and what that future cost is to the city. Um, so from a CFO, CPA, budget person perspective, uh, David's going to kill me for saying this, about the only areas you could cut are your concerts in your park, you've got some money there, and your senior center. Uh, everything else is pretty minimal budget. Um, your police department, sorry, Chief, uh, takes up 40% of your budget, um, but I don't, I'm not suggesting <laughs> that you cut police. Um, obviously, people are needed. Um, you know, in my city, I would say the same thing, bring more police. So I'm, I'm not suggesting you make cuts there. Um, but if you were going to cut anything, the only things that don't have ties to them or any real increased costs would be your senior center and your concerts. Could you ballpark what those two would be equivalent to in savings? I can. Just for the record, yep, I'm not in favor of this. Yep. <laughs> let me get over. Uh, let me go over to that side of my budget. Hold on. The reason why I asked the question is. I need to know what it is. Yeah, we need to know what the where, where the savings. Well, I'm not in favor at this moment, but if she says that comes back as a two million two million dollar savings, then you know you can you can work on reduction of goals. Okay. So last year your senior center cost you four hundred and forty thousand dollars, and it's actually really reasonable compared yeah. comparatively. Your community event cost you about forty nine thousand. How much? Forty nine thousand. Forty nine thousand. Okay, events. So you didn't you didn't Obviously, have a lot of events last year. So let me let me go back to twenty nineteen. Hold on. Let me go to, back to twenty nineteen on both pre COVID. Just one second. Twenty nineteen community events. Yeah, about seventy five thousand. Um, and your senior center. Concert no. Park? No. no. Oh. Your senior center is still about the same, 430,000 in 2019. I, I just feel like we ride really close to that line of being out of balance rather quickly at any given moment. I mean, our, I know we're, I do keep we're an eye on it. Down. Yeah, I know. I know you do a great job, but you know, I don't feel, I feel like we should be putting balanced out, but still be putting more away. And, and I feel like we're that putting more away is stopped. And now we're having to start taking from what our savings is, which is, I know why it, it's there, but. It actually hasn't stopped. Um, in fact, I just took a, a unsolicited, unanticipated standard and poor's uh, surveillance call last week, um, shock to me. And they were actually surprised at how much we have grown our general fund ending balance. Um, I did explain to them that you guys chose to transfer some of that to the parks, so they're aware of that. Um, but he was still impressed with how well we've grown since, um, you know, since I started working at the city. Was he impressed enough to increase our credit rating? Oh, good. Uh, uh, just a surveillance call, so no. It was just. <laughs> we're way up there. Yeah, we're A plus plus, aren't we? A plus. So we have a difficult decisions to make because we can't really we don't want to raise taxes, but then at the same time we've got um, 
that have to be paid for that doesn't have enough income from the city to pay for those things. One thing that's logical is to be no tax. It's not going to affect yeah. our citizens that much. Our businesses are growing. You look at the sales every month that we're getting from Sherry, how your, your retail sales have been up. You're only speaking all the time. So they're making money off of that. So we might as well also get some profit from that going on to help the city offset our costs. Right? I, I do feel that we need to look into um, the industrial side, getting some of that income. Yeah, parking pack fee yeah, and the yeah. Yeah. manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would help a lot. We talked about that several times. Yeah. And the more we talk, the more we're losing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We need to stop talking and make some decisions and, and do it. A, a lot of growth going on in <laughs> East Town over the next five or six years that yeah. if we don't do something sooner than later, we'll lose out on that. Exactly. And, and and that's gonna we're gonna literally lose everything because that's getting those are getting built out right now yeah. as we speak. And, so and again, that's a regressive revenue stream. Yeah. As we build out more, yeah. it goes away. So, yeah. To, to be considered that, you know, it's not one time money, but it is limited money until. Well, except the homes aren't being, that can't be built, you know. Yeah. For now. Yeah. I mean, if we did something Same that, there. if we did something on in industrial manufacturing, that would offset the $10,000 that our compliance says for new residential. And maybe there's harmony there that can help close that gap a bit. But again, we're going to run into the issue that as parks grow, maintenance is going to need to be out there and revenue stream for maintenance is going to be shrinking as city grows. As the city gets bigger, the budget gets smaller, I guess is how you can look at it. Unless we have the B&O tax. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and then, then <clears throat> as it grows, so does the income. Yeah. I don't see any so, way around not being able, not doing the B&O tax and potentially the park the impact fee tax on commercial and manufacturing. I do, I do like keeping it low for, um, or to, or low to nothing for the yeah. smaller businesses yeah. because I don't want to harm people. I want them to want to come to Bonnie Lake and start their business. And also, our job to make sure that our business is successful. We go about doing that. Yeah. Can we, we, data on, uh, can we look at page? Can we look at page seventy real quick? I'm, I'm curious about page seventy. We can try. We don't have. We don't know that we have anything handy or not, so that we can do a little research. Public Services something. Department. Let's do a survey. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, on this, on this, are all are the boxes non-union people? Is that the deal? There versus the union people are the maintenance worker three and one and two or. What was the question, Kelly? Yeah, no. Repeat the question on page seventy. On page seventy, what what's unique about what's the what's unique about the concept of boxes? Um, the, actually, uh, uh, it, looking at it, um, no, that doesn't necessarily, the boxes don't necessarily delineate who is union or who is not. Um, it is, the boxes. All of the boxes are people who are providing supervisory oversight. Okay. And it's also to help you break it down by department. See Kelly where it says like water production. Right. That's the water side, and then there's a customer service side. There's wastewater. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to co uh, correlate your departments on your uh, your budget estimate with with the staffing structure, and I, I couldn't do it. So then I was also nope. trying to I was also trying to look at the burden for you know in government contracts um, <clears throat> as a contractor with the government. Anytime we wound up with a situation like under streets where we had um, there you have uh, five senior more senior people with two junior people that's that's when the government would come in and just give the contract to a different contractor because that contractor would immediately go through and get rid of everybody they would take that maintenance worker two, make him a lead and then they would hire a whole bunch of maintenance worker ones right and that's how that's how the U.S. government would do it with contractors, right? So 
when I went out for bid, lots of times I would look at <clears throat> the org structure that was in place, and I know that that's what I would have to do in order to be competitive because the current contractor had uh, accepted the liability of the seniority in all those departments. So that's why I'm just trying to understand, you know, what the boxes mean versus what the levels mean, and then kind of try to understand also the, you know, how does that correspond to your budget estimate with the with with the department? So, so know, um, so we're using your using your uh, streets example there. The maintenance workers are is basically <laughs> maintenance worker one twos are a classification. It's a series. So. The way you progress is as soon as you meet the qualifications to advance to a maintenance worker two, you're automatically promoted to that position. Maintenance worker threes are an internal promotion only once you meet that experience. But I'm currently working with the union right now on some tweaks to that whole classification and, and what uh, the criteria is for promotion. There's more to come on that. But because we obviously, because we're not competing for contracts, it's a completely different way of thinking. It's a completely different rationale for how promotions work. and um it's yeah it's it's uh completely different than than what you described most of the positions that you see on that org chart that are not in boxes other than maybe uh i'd have to go through and count for sure but most of those positions uh are uh union membership um the positions in the boxes Looking at those, just to give you a quick background, looking at the positions in the boxes, all of those are non-union except for the permit center and uh, permit coordinator, Jody Barnett, is union. And then the lead positions in public works are union. Uh, everything else, assistant superintendents, tech support, uh, the assistant city engineer, the uh, public works admin supervisor, and then, of course, Superintendent of Public Works, Plank Building Supervisor, City Engineer, and myself are all non-union. Okay. And then, uh, McClymans, uh, Council Member McClymans, the other part of you trying to equate this to the 500,000 is only the bottom right side of that goes to the general fund. And I'm telling you, I'm out of balance on the general fund. We're having a study done on the water, sewer, streets, or, or I'm sorry, water, sewer, and storm right now. So that doesn't even play into my number. Uh, or with each subject. Oh, yeah. Are, are I, you going to make a point? I was. I was just going to say, and Sherry just hit on something. It was in uh, my uh, key needs earlier. Uh, the relationship between stormwater and streets. Another interesting thing I want to point out here. Stormwater, the reason it's so critical we're doing a rate analysis on that right now is that we do not properly fund that. That is an enterprise fund. It is a utility in as much as the sewer utility is a utility and the water utility is a water utility, but we can only afford to actually hire. That shows two, uh, three employees there, but the cost for the lead is shared with the streets department. Um, that, that, that individual salary is split halfway between the streets <coughs> general fund and stormwater utility enterprise fund. And I think that the employees share, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Keith Proctor is the only one that's 100% funded by the stormwater utility. I believe Colby might be split between streets and storm. Regardless, I can tell you in half a hot minute. Where this really starts to bite us from an operational perspective is that when this comes into practice in the field, oftentimes many of the streets department employees, when work needs to be done on the stormwater side, have to go and work for the stormwater utility. So you're paying general fund monies to pay streets employees to go work for the stormwater utility. That's I don't know if that's technically illegal or not, but it is completely inappropriate and it's not the way you should be running a utility. And so we really need to consider how that works and really look hard at how we want to fund our utility, our stormwater utility, and really fund it appropriately. Yeah, sorry, Sherry. So, oh no, you're fine. I just, I can't see anybody. That's why I raised my hand. Um, so your surface water currently funds 6.25 people. And how you okay. come up with that is uh, you know, like your permit tech, 10% of yeah. their job goes towards it. Um, you actually have full-time people, uh, you have two. Yeah, okay. So stormwater, stormwater's funding two people full-time. Yeah. Exactly. How many does it need? 
We've got a full CIP list of projects that we can't really get to. We barely keep up with a base amount of maintenance to keep ditches clean, that kind of thing. Most any project that we do in stormwater, we end up trying to piggyback on the back of some of the other utilities projects and then kicking a little bit of money from the stormwater utility into the budget for, say, a sewer project or a water project in order to get it done. So you just saw that happen last year with our sewer project on 410. We also did some stormwater work as part of that, and we just kicked some money from the stormwater utility over that. So the question then is, since this is literally kind of like in the water, and I know we spoke before that the water sewer bills or whatever cover the workers from the public works department, why is stormwater coming out of the general fund and not out of, is it streets or is it stormwater that's coming out? So you, we end up in a situation where streets employees end up having to do stormwater maintenance. And really, ideally, that should not be occurring because then you have streets employees who aren't doing streets work. Right. So, you know, yeah, it just creates operationally, it creates an issue where we end up falling behind on street work. Now, when you were talking about tweaking with the representative employees and all that, I was, what raised a hackle in my mind was how far, when you say tweak, is that messing with the contract that we settled with our representative employees or kind of like a budget amendment or anything like that to where we're actually, it's like we set on a contract, that contract is good for three years, but in the middle of those three years, you're getting together and tweaking with all of that. So when the last, what's the effect of that? Yeah, sure. When the last contract was passed, there was a re-opener clause in there to look at the maintenance worker series and to evaluate certifications and other criteria to see if this was really the way we wanted this program, the maintenance worker series to be. And so that's what we're looking at is we're taking advantage of that that was in the contract as a re-opener, I think is what it was called. And so it's falling in line with the approved contract to go back and look at this. Okay, good, thanks. All right, just to be clear, I'm not looking for places on here to cut. I'm looking to understand it and understand how the commitment over time, because each one of these names here is a is a person and is important. And we've made a commitment to them that we're going to employ them. So I want to make sure I understand before we look at what happens, what their what their career growth is. That's why I asked the question about the union. And then what is the responsibilities in terms of, you know, because you're in a box, it means what sometimes that means something in terms of, you know, the way you get paid or other things. So I'm just trying to really understand because 500,000 is how many, how many people is $500,000? Well, it depends on the position and that's the general fund. So a lot of Ryan's position people are not general fund. Right. So it just to complicate it even more, um, <laughs> but I'm more than willing to spend as much time as it needs uh, with each of you individually. Um, you know, it's taken me 16 years to get this down. I don't expect you to have it overnight. Right. How many people, so the stormwater deal enterprise, um, you only have two with a lead that's from streets. How many is it supposed to fund, I guess? So your stormwater right now, um, and you can see from the org chart, it's actually your lead is half streets, half storm. Um, right. And so there are a lot of people that are currently kind of budgeted a little bit this and a little bit that. He has two full people just devoted just to surface water. But I'll tell you, um, when we put this budget together, this last time, you know, Ryan and I had a conversation about this, that we can't continue doing business this way because we're not bringing in enough money to um, support, to be balanced in this storm. And we had that discussion last year. Um, you are probably going to spend more in storm than you're bringing in this year. So that's why we really need to look at the rates. 
and we uh, we and do he have needs people. Yeah, yeah, and, and unfortunately, as as ha seems to happen in wastewater and 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 water, uh, we've got changing regulations. We were notified this year from the Department of Ecology. We've got another portion of our MPDES program and enforcement part of it that we've got to pick up and get started. Um, so it's just another layer of work for that utility that we're going to have to start, you know, really hammering away on. It's going to take, it's going to have staffing implications. We don't really know fully yet what that is. We don't have to necessarily have that running by the end of the year, I don't believe, but it is something we have to start planning for. Did, did they send money? What's that? Yeah. yeah. So each year we've done a really good job of getting, they, there's a $50,000 grant that they make available that, uh, through the Department of Ecology that we've done a really good job of getting each year. Okay. Are there any additional grants specifically for that program? I don't know yet, but we will definitely be looking at that. Can, can they just go through and do that? Can they add responsibility onto us as a city without funding it? Can we push uh, back and say, well, can we push back on it and say no way, right? <laughs> You're crazy. That's the police. Legal to help us push back on that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the question about whether we can or not really is not something I'm comfortable answering. <laughs> I, uh, I would leave that maybe to a to, city attorney, perhaps. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I, Kelly, I can, I can only tell you from from my, from my position. You know, it's similar to that conversation we had about sewer, right? You know, at the staff level, we get handed these these unfunded mandates from the regulatory agencies and our charge is to figure out a way to make them happen. Um, I, uh, uh, I can't give you a better answer than that, unfortunately. Um, the legality of it, yeah, that'd be something I'd talk about, I guess, with our attorney, but for me, that's, that's just a battle that has to be fought in another day. The immediate need is that I gotta figure out how to make it happen because, because if I don't, it, it, it does unfortunately mean additional trouble for the city. They, they will find, they have mechanisms in place to cite us or find us in violation. And then it, it, it just is, it's a huge headache. So, yeah, well, is a $10,000 fine cheaper than a, is a $10,000 <laughs> fine cheaper than a $70,000 employee? Right. Well, I guess it just depends how long we continue to get that ten thousand dollar fine. <laughs> Go ahead, Sherry. SPS is doing uh, a rate study on this to see if our rates are currently set at the appropriate amount, and that will come back when the water sewer rates come back. Um, uh, if you don't know, this utility is funded through your what you would call your water bill. Really. So, Ryan, you know, um, of course, I'll pester you about your uh, CMS and your um, tasks in there, right? So, all of those things that you just mentioned, maintenance tasks, hopefully it'd be great if those were all identified in your uh, CMS system yeah. so that you could give us a nice little labor, labor utilization report so that we could actually say, oh, yeah, you know what? There's all of these activities that we have to do in STORM that yeah. have been identified. And there's hours attributed to them, and we have X number of employees. So obviously, you know, that's that works really well for me. Yeah. To, to say Absolutely. that we need more people, or that we like more people, or that we should have, you and know, that doesn't I, really like fly. Through. I knew that you would be coming up with that. <laughs> and and as you know, I mean, obviously, we've been working really hard on making sure that we're getting that all together in water and sewer and. And just like from a funding perspective, certainly also on, on some of the work planning perspective, I have to be honest with you, we've lagged a little bit in stormwater there too. Oh, yeah. But it, you're absolutely right. That is something that we need to make sure we're capturing because that is our justification. That's my primary way of showing you that we yeah, have a need. Exactly. And we've yeah. got some legwork to do yeah. there still. Yeah. And, and those are really good. It's great data to have because it's easy to generate, demonstrate to people why you have the need. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just kind of talking. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to fall Wait asleep over here. I hear you. Show me a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we uh, done with that then? Yeah. Would, would, the city, would the city attorney fall under this discussion? Under the city staff structure? But, uh, yeah, I would yeah, think exactly. so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we so I had one more question about Department 15. Who is Department 15? Right between 14 and 16. <laughs> 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 
Department 51. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Area 51. Yeah. That was a typo. That's our code. So from memory, I believe Department 15 is your executive. Legal. Let me scroll down that's and see what legal included. services. Okay. So that legal would be. Um, okay. So that would be your prosecuting attorney, uh, and your, the two prosecutors and Carol, and okay. now uh, legal assistant, I believe, is what they added with ARPA funds. And, and so then what, the other thing we understand is that the ARPA funds, so in 2025, we're going to come back and be uh, 700, like $800,000 in the hole, right? Once the ARPA funds uh, are done. Only if you choose to put all of that towards people. These positions are limited term right now, anything that you okay. have authorized for, yeah, so they would be let go if you chose not to in the next budget, um, fund them. Do we have any indication on the org structure on who's, who's uh, limited then, or who is uh, seasonal? So it's part of your budget process. I think everybody who has a limited term employee uh, funded through ARPA will be presenting to the council authorization to fund that position. So you'll see okay. it uh, when it comes up for budget. Um, uh, same with the city attorney. We have to make a decision on that. You're going to see that come through um, all of the positions that um, are not ARPA funded that people want to add. So uh, like Ryan's talked about adding some storm people, you'll see them in your budget process when we get there. Thank you. Yeah, we mm -hmm. talked about courts at all. Was there a problem? We need to, anything we need to keep the minds coming up with courts and personnel there? Your Where's time. Courts? I'm sorry. Talking about you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Personnel? We haven't talked personnel. about courts at all. Personnel. Yes. Could we share with the class? So um, um, I think, as everybody knows, I lost uh, Kristen, who uh, we had brought in. Uh, and um, right after she got to her six month mark, she just passed her six month mark, uh, she took a position with the prosecutor's office as uh, a legal assistant. One. And uh, so we have just recently been lucky enough to um, refill that position, uh, but we're bringing that person in as a judicial specialist to um, Kelly, who comes to us with about 20 years of experience. Uh, she is going to be awesome. Kathy's actually worked with her in the past. Me too. She's okay. Awesome. All right. And, yeah, and um, yeah. <laughs> she, she's got a very, very impressive resume. Tons of experience. And she's going to be a wonderful asset to the court. We're really lucky to get her. Um, let's see. We've got the community court up and running. Uh, it's really going well now. Um, we actually have uh, 16 active participants. Um, on Monday, I went to that, as you know, one time I enjoyed going to it too. Oh, good. I'm so yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah. And I'm sorry I didn't recognize you, but you weren't <laughs> dressed like you are today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doctor. was actually in the very back of the courtroom, and we had just finished with everybody else that was in the courtroom. And uh, I said to the uh, judicial specialist that was in the <laughs> Is that another defendant? <laughs> <laughs> I would have lost you. <laughs> and the prosecutor jumped up and he said, that's, that's councilman. <laughs> no, I said, come up, come up. And please, all of you, please come to court and visit us. Um, because we would love to share with you and uh, show you what's going on. Um, and, uh, and come into the office, too, and see what everybody is doing. And um, um, talk to our staff. Uh, find out uh, what is involved uh, in the processes that, that they actually have to deal with. Um, yeah, but to get back to community court, so on Monday we have three people who are coming in to be assessed regarding their amenability, and if they're found amenable, then they'll come back the next week to actually be admitted into court, and then we'll have 19 people. And um, we just had uh, one individual um, last Monday um, who was really, really having a horribly difficult time, um, who um, I actually remanded in the custody for two days uh, so that he could sober up. And he came back on Wednesday uh, clean and very uh, clear-headed and uh, begged to uh, stay in community court. And so uh, we really have high hopes for that individual as well. So uh, that's, that's really promising. Um, 
Yes. Um, we have changed um, the way that our staff is um, um, serving in the courtroom. Um, our um, judicial specialists, uh, we have one in the morning. Uh, and then when that first person is finished with the morning calendar, um, they take all the files that they've worked on that morning and they spend the afternoon processing those files. Uh, that means uh, making docket entries, um, entering um, whatever findings have to be entered into the uh, If there's any no contact orders that were already electronically immediately transmitted to the police department uh, during the court session, then they are also completing the certification process that has to be done. Um, so that they get that all processed in that day. In the afternoon, we have a different uh, person in the courtroom who is doing the same thing, and then they have the next morning to the, do the same processing. So that everything is being handled in a much more timely fashion. Um, two Fridays ago, um, Kathy and the staff spent uh, several hours uh, cleaning up the boxes of files in each person's um, what do you call those things? Cubicles. They're cubicles yeah. um, because they were really fire hazards. Not to mention the fact that- Shouldn't I go to storm? To <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have enough to do. Um, but uh, it's, it's kind of demoralizing, you know, when you're sitting there every day, you're doing boxes that need to be uh, taken care of. And so they made that a priority. They got it all done in one day. They broke down all the files that needed to be broken down. They filed away all the files that have been closed and have been waiting to be closed. That's all been done. Uh, and uh, I think we're pretty much up to date at this point. And uh, so I'm really happy with everything. Um, our new staff person, Kelly, she starts on May 26th. And um, things are good, they are, are, are really coming along. Um, well, anything? I had the pleasure of being able to observe our uh, second uh, jury trial uh, that. Um, um, and, and I can tell you, I was very impressed by the way the judge and our uh, uh, prosecutors did handle that trial. Professional. And, uh, and uh, uh, while I may disagree with half of the verdict, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it still, it was, um, um, uh, it, it was run very, very, very well. I'm impressed by half, half or I, and just as an add-on to that, um, you know, we, there were really no trials that have been done pretty COVID. And so um, week before last, uh, we did a trial. Then we did a trial, uh, and that was a two-day trial. We did another trial this uh, Friday. Um, on Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, we'll have another trial. And so our trials are just going, and we're just, and those, both of those trials, by the way, were from 2019. So you can see how things have really been put on the back burner. So we're catching up. And that's consistent with the area. Most of the areas are still working on their 29 for the same reason we are. So. And, and also, on another note, a lot of the uh, courts still have not gone back to open courtrooms at the municipal court level uh, for jury trials. So we're really fortunate to be able to do that. And we've had a good response from jurors. Uh, they have been really good about coming in uh, when they get their summons. And um, we have uh, these questionnaires that we give them uh, in their little uh, goodie bags that they get. Um, and they've been nice enough to fill them out. And they've been pretty positive in their responses. And we try to be really respectful of the jurors' time. Uh, we don't do um, motions the day of trial. A lot of courts do motions the day of trial. We have a day set aside, Monday afternoons at 3 o'clock, um, the week that the trial is supposed to start. That's when we address the motions. So that um, the jurors show up on the day of trial at eight o'clock in the morning. The staff is there; they're ready to greet them. Uh, they they bring them in. Uh, they have them uh, uh, get their badges. Uh, they fill out the uh, the questionnaire information, so that's all ready to go for the judge and the uh, attorneys when it's it's time to start the trial. We start at nine o'clock. Uh, we bring the veneer in, and uh, we begin with our jury selection at nine o'clock. And we have a jury selected. This last two trials, we had our jury selected by 10:15, and we go right into closing arguments, or I mean, opening statements. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're not that 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 <laughs> I know, right? Presumption of innocence. <laughs> um, so, so uh, I kind of excited to see it, it going. Um, the first trial, the lawyers were a little taken aback when. Uh, 
they wanted to take a break after the jury was selection, selected. And I said, it's only 10.30, we're not taking a break. We'll take a break at noon. And I said, we need to move this stuff along. We've got a lot of trials to do and stopping at four o'clock. So you guys need to be ready. Maybe have your witnesses ready and let's go. And <coughs> it's been working out really well. Great, you're not having and, plea and, deals at the last second? Pardon me? You're not having plea deals at the last second? They're not allowed on the day of trial. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. No, if they if they if they decide that they're going to plead, it has to be done the, at least the day before because we have jurors coming in, we right. have to pay them. Yep. So we're, we're we are um, cognizant of the budget and try to be really really respectful of that money. And I just want to um, give a little shout out to the chief, your officers, they're just awesome. Mm -hmm. And Officer Cohen, I love that guy. <laughs> he testifies so well and he's always prepared, always prepared. I really, really, I, there's nothing better than to have the officer come in. He's actually read his report ahead of time and he's prepared. I mean, because 2019, you know, it's kind of hard to remember, right? You know, you figure he's probably made 500 contacts, 1,000 contacts between then and now, and, and he is prepared. But the thing I was, I was impressed by, officer, was the fact that when he did not uh, recall, he, he on, the, on the record, he actually procedurally was honest, say, I don't recall. They did a great um, uh, refresh of recollection so that he could read his report. It was done in his and um, in a way that's not contestable. So it was, uh, that's what I was impressed with. And when he was finished, he turned his report upside down and looked at the jury. He yeah. was great. That's all I have. That's awesome. Excellent. So my question originally was, uh, uh, talking about, I know you you would like a full time. City oh, sitting city attorney, yes. yeah. Um, or make a plea for that or a case or that is this the time? Oh that well, it, I, did, yeah, I, I, I thought I was doing it throughout the entire. Well, yeah, well, yeah I mean, but, you know, as far as the the plea that I was making with it, but um, the thing that I was concerned about with that, uh, well, first of all, the overarching theme of it is that now that we're a city of uh, 22,000 to 23,000, a city of 22 to 23,000, it's it, it's necessary to have a full-time city, uh, mainly because the uh, city attorney um, would be able to devote uh, all all of their time to the city rather than just doing it in a piecemeal fashion. That has caused some things that, that have been negotiated, should have been negotiated by a legal department and, and it was uh, put, into, uh, uh, put into action and now we're looking at uh, litigation as a result of some of that. It's, um, I know I'm being general here, but it, it's, uh, uh, I, I can tell you that Dina has put together a, uh, a a presentation, which Kathleen actually has has put her two cents in as far as approving it, um, and uh, and she's in agreement that I think the city now needs a, a full time city attorney. And they have that set out. Uh, what I would ask is that we put that on one of the uh, uh, either a, a workshop or one of the meetings so that that can be presented. Um, rather than me just fumble bumble through it right now, but you know the over the overarching theme is that we we are a city that just has too many issues right now that we just can't afford to um, uh, to have a city attorney that we just go to on an on call basis. They solve that uh, particular issue, we get off, and then they don't look at what we're doing. Uh, you know, like today is a very good example where we should have had a city attorney here to. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, to give us guidance on, you know, what we can do and what we can't do. Um, it's things like this that you just don't think of in, you know, in the future. Um, I do know that a question was posed at one of the meetings as, or at least a comment was said, uh, you know, we're doing fine now. And why that caught my attention as being uh, uh, something that we need to address is, is the fact that there's there were so many unanticipated things that that weren't thought of that that our um, uh, city attorney could be doing that would merit the full-time status uh, uh, you know that we're not doing one of them uh, being 
uh, if our prosecutor is not devoting time to being a deputy city attorney, we could have our prosecutor uh, concentrating on and just to use DUIs and uh, you know as an example. Uh, right now, we're in a position, especially with COVID and every, you know and everything that comes on, we're having to you know it's it's pros or it's uh, they're arrested, they're filed, but we're at a, uh, we're at a point to where the prosecutions are becoming stale. Our judge has no no uh, choice but to dump them, and we can't. Uh, um, and uh, and that's not setting that's not doing our city a service at all. Uh, it, it runs into the same problem that we're having with the thefts and not being able to put them into jails. Uh, you know they think that it you know and that and that word gets out uh, uh, because of that. It's um, so and, and you know and as far as city structure and 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 everything you know I. Like I said, I'm going on and I'm fumble bumbling and I didn't want to, <laughs> but uh, but I think we sh it, I think that this particular discussion merits um, uh, going through uh, going through our formal process going through. Oh well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I you know I just look at one. What? How often do we have to go outside of Kathleen for other issues? Do we contract anyone else out, or does she? For something that she's not knowledgeable on, I don't have the data on that. We on, haven't had to do it we, since I've been here. Yeah. Outside legal counsel for labor negotiations. Okay, but but just that. Some property stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And 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 personnel actions. So, um, so a lot of that is either WCIA to. Yeah, and WCIA, I found out is it's not all encompassing. As far as no. what they represent and what they don't, and uh, when it comes to liability actions, I'm actually really concerned about that. Uh, you know, it's it's like I don't want to take the um, attitude that, that oh, here's a legal action that's coming in, we can just throw it to WCIA and we have our insurance to pay for it. You know, it it, it um, sometimes there's limitations. To so, so even if we had our own inside city attorney, mm -hmm. we would still have to go contract out other things potentially at times but a lot less okay um and i can, you know i can't prognosticate what you know what, what would happen in that what i can say is that if we did have a city attorney when if we did have to go out we would be a lot more prepared a lot uh it would be a lot more uh self-directed and we probably wouldn't have to pay as much because uh, because of that sort of thing but we, I mean, would, maybe. we would see I mean, 20, the last 26 months, we've paid $210,000 to Kathleen and her company for 800 hours. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine us spending much less than that in 15 or 16 months. So I don't, I don't see saving money as, as an opportunity there for our own city attorney. Mm -hmm. And you see, and that's the stuff so, I can't address. That's yeah. why I want them to make their presentation. I can, I say something? Yeah. I can tell yeah. you how much we spent on um, the city attorney last since 2017, if you'd like. Okay. Okay. Uh, so 2017, we paid out 147,000. Um, this is back when I believe the sewer camera got stuck. Um, mm -hmm. In 2018, it was 136,000. 2019, 139,000. you have any idea what a ballpark would be, what we would look at for roughly two hundred thousand with with benefits. It's benefits. gonna be over two hundred thousand with benefits. I heard two fifty in this neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, Judge, do you want to say something? All right, well I was just gonna say that if you were looking at bringing in one of the things that I'm sure that uh, the mayor would be asking everybody to consider who uh, does litigate. So uh, unless you have something that is, is really out of the ordinary, they would be handling. I just look at can, two years. Can you repeat that? I didn't hear all of that. <clears throat> uh, he said, uh, so it was uh, Judge Daniels was saying that if we're wanting to look into having our own attorney, it would be best if we looked for somebody who could litigate so we don't have to go outside of the city attorney to do that. 
that would save us some money so, there. Um, I just looked up how much it would cost. It would be at least 250000 a year. And um, since this is a director level position, it would require per your code that you uh, do an external uh, advertisement for this position. <laughs> yes. uh, Sherry, how many billable hours did we have in 2019 and 2018? Um, that'll take me a second to find. I'll get back to you. Okay, great. Thank you. See, and it's questions like that that, uh, and I'm not criticizing the question at all. Um, uh, but where where it starts worrying me is is the fact that. You know, who's discussing what these billable hours are? Who's making the decision that this is a question that has to go to our city attorney? Whereas if we had a city attorney, they would be the ones who would be able to, they're the experts on deciding whether this is a litigatable issue, whether this is a, a, a you know, a legal issue, whether it's an issue that the city has to look at as opposed to a city making that decision and simply going out to on a contract basis to uh, uh, to get the uh, you know to get the uh, question answered. Um, uh, it's it, it's simply irresponsible for us to you know with the city size that we have right now to uh, uh, you know to consider keep to sustaining the way that has been uh, done in the past because um, you, you know that would be part of the city attorney's job is um, is looking at the legality of it, representing our city's interest um, in in ways that um, uh, that we as a council aren't really thinking of right now, and it's uh, so. To put to put it on a numbers game and saying we've only you know we only paid in 2017 we only paid in, in 2018 this is how much we did what that tells me is the risk of liability that we've had all these years to where we've just been lucky uh, and I, I've already discovered a lot like I said I've already discovered a couple three issues that handled that have been out of where we haven't been code compliant. And uh, and it's only because nobody has sued us that you know that we're at that we're at that level, and um, so you know to say because it's going to cost us two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as opposed to what we paid uh, before, it's you can't you can't really look at, at at that that budgetary way of of, of doing it because uh, you know we need somebody. Is going to make sure that that we are compliant uh, with our RCWs and that we are operating in a way that is essentially legal. And um, and a contractor can't do that. Uh, a contract it because the contractor is working piecemeal. They're working on the specific issue that we give them. Uh, you yeah, know, but we and, could and give and them that um, option too. Or we could, you know we could give them that option, but there have been things that have slipped through the cracks that people didn't think to take to the city attorney um, to ask whether it was legal or not. They just assumed that it, that it was. Well, how would that change even if we had our own city attorney if they neglected to think of that in the first place? Because our, oh, oh if, if they did? Yeah, having one in-house versus a contract doesn't change the fact that they didn't do it. Well, again, that comes to uh, prognostication. What 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 it is 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 that we we would have an expert on staff who would, you know, it's not going to be absolute. I don't know if they're not going to think of it or not, but it would. But the risk is definitely lowered yeah. in the fact that they probably would. And um, oh, <laughs> and, and, go ahead. Oh. So you can pick up the phone and you can call the city attorney and say, hey, do you think this is something you ought to weigh in on? Yeah. Do you think this is something we should be talking to you about? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just that simple. Yeah. And, and you can do that today. Yeah, we can. Any of us can do that today with MRSC. Right. With I mean, what? MRSC. And so as a council, not done it before. You can just yeah, call them. The city yeah. has that. The, you know, the city pays for that, basically. Mm -hmm. In 2021, we had 325 billable hours for $81,000. So here's a here's a different way to look at here's a different way to look at it. So we're about a hundred thousand dollars. We need another hundred thousand dollars for a city attorney, based on what we spent in 2017 through 2019, 
and what we think it's going to cost to get a city attorney. So that's going to put us not at $500,000 out of budget, but $600,000 out of budget. So if we're going to do that, can you point on that org chart and tell me who on that org chart is going to go away so we can have a city attorney? No, I can't just, right now. No, it's just more you know, B&O tax. The, the money apparently is the way that it's I hear the money's been structured. It's just it might just our, end up with a peaceful. Yeah, the B&O, it's just more of the B&O. The less would be less. Yeah. What I'm okay, hearing so, is that there's plenty of B&O to be able to address mm -hmm. the problems that the mayor presents. Well, uh, did, well but, but uh, let me backtrack a little bit to the scenario that was presented before the work we just pick up the phone and call um, in a, MSRC. Yeah. They're not going to answer the question in the way that we need it to be answered. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, what they're going to do <laughs> is give us a general... Oh, Are we doing lawyer jokes now? Doing it. <laughs> yeah, and it's... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I wish I could, you know, just based on my experience and everything, kind of like, uh, uh, you know, Ryan and him and him explaining storm and sewer to, you know, when you when you're in the industry or an engine exactly. systems engineer yeah. or an, yeah. you know, yeah. an engineer along those lines, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know. But unfortunately, we're you know we're a municipality, which is a, you know a corporation, we're a government yeah. that has that that needs to run. And I'm going to use the word again legally, and and right now we're out of compliance with some things, sure. and it's um, and one of the reasons why we're out of compliance with with some things is because it slipped through the cracks of of asking our contract city attorney, and it uh, so in order to get to the point to where we are compliant and. You, and can get more money in and, and and get our reputation as a city better with the county and with all of our other people uh, you know around we we need uh, uh, a, a person who is an expert in legal issues who are but not only an expert in legal issues but it, they're they're looking their client is the city right. and so they are they the issues that are, are brought forth are vetted through them full time, as opposed to us just deciding that this may be a uh, legal issue. Let's you know, let's phone them up on, sure. on you know, yeah. you know, on the phone. And it's uh, uh, it, because of our size now. It, it right. you know, it's something that I think is is necessary. But again, you know, like I'm saying, let's go let's go through the process. Let's get. Dina and Kathleen to put on the presentation because they can give you specifics that I'm not able to give you. Um, so, and uh, oh, here's another one of my concerns about the attorney is like with in my experience is that right now if I would ask my attorney for direction, I would wind up doing a lot of the homework because my attorney's really busy right now with with contract negotiations, and they're super busy with that where three months ago they weren't. And when I asked them about a labor issue three months ago, I got an answer the same day. Today, I get an email back saying, please go look at this, go refer to that, go refer to that, give me this, give me that. And that's expected because they're busy right now with something else. The, 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 the attorney, a single attorney is gonna be stuck in a job jar problem. Once their job jar is full, they're gonna have to have other people do their homework, a certain amount of homework for them, while they're busy doing their work. So. That pick up the phone thing for me doesn't ring true because so many times I picked up the phone and they're like, I'd love to help you, Kelly, but we're busy right now. Here, go do these things and then we'll look at it and we'll give you the answer because their job yard's full. Where if you have a contracted position, you're like, look, I need the answer tomorrow and um, here's the data I know today. Go give me an answer and uh, they can try to get you that answer. Well, um, so I have a deputy. The attorney too, and and we would be putting it on, you know, on on that because our prosecuting attorney is also our deputy city attorney, and if it's a problem that runs to that particular scenario, um, it would be something that would be getting your answer, uh, you know, a lot sooner. But now we're getting into hypotheticals as to, uh, you know, in things that cannot be a hundred percent solved in, in what we're looking at. I mean, we're taking That's a risk. Right. <laughs> And, you know, I, I would just add to what Kelly's thoughts are, because being on the engineering side of the house, right, mm -hmm. not the legal, uh, 
the, the uh, it's a resource thing that I always look at, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we need to, whether it's an internal resource, external, or a set of, or a hybrid of, it's a resource thing. Like you identify, you know, it's like if you have a problem with a gap in um, being able to get to lawyers and being able to have proper legal advice, you know, how do we do that with resources? You know, that's what I always look at. I don't really care whether it's one person or 500 people or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's just a resource kind of a thing. Because if we hire a person internally, you're still going to have issues with vacation, sick leave, and all this kind of stuff. Sure. They're going to be unavailable. But we're still going to need that legal advice, as you point out. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not going to be able to schedule our needs around their vacation. Well, yeah, and that's so why we would have an organized yeah. 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 We we would would organize legal department. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so yeah. you need to have that holistic view of making sure that we have those resources available. Absolutely. As opposed to just like, oh, we need to hire somebody that's going to fix our problem. It's like, maybe it does. I just want to make sure that the, yeah. it's all resourced. So okay. Would you, you would have the city attorney and the deputy city attorney, and you wouldn't combine those? Into well, that, well, the prosecutor would be the deputy city attorney. And okay. really, but what that would do is, is with, um, with a full-time city attorney, what what say Dina is doing now on the on the city on the civil side, uh, that would lessen us considerably uh, for her to where she could focus on um, on the criminal side on, on our prosecutors. That we really do need um, uh, in order to get these cases through. Uh, I mean, again, with Brian spinning his wheels with you know, a wonderful police department that is doing arrests. But we don't have the resources to fully prosecute them. Yeah. Um, you know, it just drops. It, it, it just drops. So you have a full time city attorney. If there's any sort of, say, the jar is full and it spills over a little bit, that's where your deputy city attorney comes in and would, uh, uh, that's where the prosecutor would come in and do some deputy city attorney, uh, you know, jobs. But right now, the percentage would uh, rise on how much you get to vote to the criminal side versus the civil side. Yeah. All right. But the, also, okay. um, per the code right now, you can't just move Dina over to the city attorney position. It would have to, unless the council were to waive that, all director level positions have yeah. to either be waived yeah. by the council for external hiring or they have to go out for publication for hire. Oh yeah, I wasn't, uh, I, I, right now what I'm just saying is that we need a full-time city attorney. I'm not suggesting how we go about it. I'm actually in quite in favor of the fact that we should go out and advertise for it. Um, so you'd have a city so. attorney, prosecuting attorney, and prosecutor? Uh, yeah, it would be, a, 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 it, it, at this point with the legal department, it would be a, a a three attorney system. You would have your city attorney, you would have your prosecuting attorney, you'd have to get the prosecutor. Yeah. Okay. We uh, take a 10 minute break and we'll come back. Uh, while we're on break, maybe uh, use your dots to uh, get the areas over here. That's the next discussion. Yeah, dots important. So if we could knock those out. Okay. I'm, I'm have I, have I forfeited my have I forfeited my dots, Terry, or can I can I put dots no, on once know. I'm clear of my? Uh, you gave those to me, yeah. Kelly. <laughs> I have your. Okay, Kelly. Kelly, you can just you, send them to me. Um, mark, mark up the mark up the goals that are your friend. We gave them twelve dots. Right. Okay. Go off that list in the packet, and you can just email that to me. That's fabulous, John. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Don't we have to pursue options? Yeah, you're supposed to water for water. Yeah, exactly. But then, don't we have to pursue options to obtain additional water supply in that required sequence? No, that was the CWA agent. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm about to wrap things up. No, 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 no. One, one dot for both. One for. Oh, I think you're not really busy. How are the on one of this? What is going on? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
first thing Terry asked me is, yeah. where's my jail? Oh, that would be great if we could do something like that. Save the money from the store. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Do you recall yeah. like when we had the Halloween child? Yeah. 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 Is there any kind of commitment yet? Yeah. I, think the the C C C I think they got temporary. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, so can be close to so the yeah. yeah. But no, I think that would be a yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why we reuse it. Time to go. Right. Yeah. Oh, just Because, yeah, well, it was hell, right? The spirit stores. <laughs> so I'm looking for years. We about ready to get going again. Oh, on. Get this down. Wait, one, two, two. Okay. Thursday night. It's a dozen. But I like the way you're thinking. So it was on Facebook. Yeah. Everybody started posting. Morning. And they said, No, it's not done. Maybe. How about we just repeat yeah, yeah, you know, the additional rules? Yeah. Let's get out of here. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Jamie, I was like, oh, I don't actually. No, I'm not. I'm not. It's kind of like what I know. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> We appreciate you, but she, I got called out. Yeah, AirPods in the drain. Yeah, we got some AirPods in the drain at the skate park. We got them mobilized now. Oh, those go in I'm sure it'll go back in there perfectly. Chuck will? Yeah. Perfect. He's looking at you. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Yeah, I know. A couple days. 
So he should be uh, getting back next uh, on Monday, and I can talk to him and see what's, uh, what's got going on. Checking out more and more. Permit staff to be able to get. Um, so Hopefully, that's the only one. Provided that's got everything in order. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been a little while since I checked it. That project was going to be a while. So, I mean, I need to go back and follow up on it and see just where, make sure everything's in order. But yeah, as long as he's got all the proper applications in and he's good to go, yeah, I don't see anything that would really be. Oh, All right, let's come back to order here. Last part. Did everybody get their dots on whatever they needed? Okay. <laughs> Put it on stuff you thought was important. Yeah. Okay. Like half of it, like Meyer. There's stuff on the Okay. Well, so additional goals. On that, on that easel, yeah. you can write, if you're like, no, I don't see anything here, but I want this. Yeah. Yeah. Are we done, John? Okay. Well, so what we're going to do is, uh, Satan's going to take the posters back, and yep. she's going to tally them up and put them on a spreadsheet and count all the dots. Yeah, and that's pretty much... Uh, oh, well, I, I can't... Yeah. Yeah, I think we're done. We'll yeah, I think we're done. Yeah. Yep. We are adjourned. Oh, we are. We're out. Hey, you are a wonderful hey, leader. <laughs> we're out. So we're